Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of By The Numbers, the hit 15 month coming, I'm your host Richard Lewis, over there. Why did you say? Why is that like a slogan? The hits keep on coming, especially I as you are just prepping into one of the most filler shows of all time. Like, <laughs> no, yeah, a yeah. good episode. You that's why. That's like why. Listen, <laughs> I want to remind people about the hits because right. you're right. This show is going to be absolute garbage, guys. There is nothing happening in Counter Strike. There's no tournaments. There's barely any news. Yeah. We're about to do some absolute garbage filler. So strap yourselves in and just remember the like 101 shows, yeah. or whatever it was, before this one. They were good. The average is still really hard. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not like this show is going to be. This show is going to be utter shit. And with that said. Thanks to our sponsor, this show uh, is brought to you by rivalry.gg slash slash discordfreezing.com, my favorite fucking website. Oh, boys, what is wrong with Discord, eh? What is... Oh, um, there we go, well, he's back. You're going to have to redo our whole thing, mate, because Discord decided it didn't want you to be fucking heard for 15 seconds. It re really, yeah. really, it, it wrecked me yeah. on the plug. You two just froze that. Our sponsor this week is... I blame you every time this happens. Sorry, mate, I, I continue to in, sponsor in, in, in my In my mind... It, it, it's just another black mark against you. And I was like, your fault. I love it when I'm just sat Probably. here with the audience, mate. Just, yeah, that's gone. 15 seconds of me alone. Better fill this, mate. So there we right, go. Well, Let's try that again. <laughs> this show oh, is brought to you by rivalry.gg. Go to rivalry.gg slash RLS and qualify up to $350 of VIP bonuses. Uh, and it, when you do that and create an account over there, it supports the channel and supports the content. Is that all right with you, Discord? All right, thanks. Let's let's get into the filler then. Uh, first of all, just want to start. I don't know if you can bring this up, Sam. If if your computer's yeah, like yeah, going to explode, if you do it, this is the most insane. <laughs> you know, right? You know those theories. You know those theories, Duncan. About what is it like? Keanu Reeves is a time traveling fucking vampire. He's been. Have you ever seen this? Sure. You know, yeah. And yeah. All the pictures are like people who look like Keanu Reeves back in the day, or yeah. Nick Cage is another cunt who's apparently a time traveling vampire. But it turns out. You're a fucking time traveling vampire as well. Who knew? Alex Jones was right, right? Because somebody just like I have stayed the same gender, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not like I'm, I'm not like Doctor Who. I'm not just swapping genders as well. I'm remaining a man throughout history. All right, well, good, good. I'm glad. Um, it, it keeps it easier, you know. I, I struggle remembering all them pronouns, you know. But um, if you look here, uh, somebody found there was like this link to a, a very obscure word. Uh, called cacoethes. And what that means is the irresistible urge to do something inadvisable, right? Or tweet something inadvisable, <laughs> I suppose. And just look at the fucking face. Would you look <laughs> at no, that? Amazing, how, is it, it, how is it you? Like, <sighs> it is just you. The maddest part that... about this is that, like, I always say this, especially with me, most of the time when people link me, like, oh, is this you? It's nearly all that, like, doesn't doesn't really look that much like, like, the only one I've ever seen that looked vaguely like me was that one where it was that, like, private prison and there's that guy lying on that bunk or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that but even then. Vague. Even then, yeah. it's like me if I'd been homeless for five years drinking fucking meth spirits. <laughs> like, you know, like, like, it's not me in my prime condition, is it? Like, even then. But this one, I have to admit, is ridiculous. Even when I saw it, I was I like, just enhanced it, mate. Especially like well. the, especially the grin. It's the grin that. Well, I but yeah, but it's got your little shit eating. That is the beak face. That's the mad <laughs> thing about it. Oh. That's the fucking beak face right there. That's what the beak face was created to do. Like, yeah, I'm tweeting <laughs> things that are gonna make also, you mad. Yeah. You part, mad? This is like, the part that does make you start thinking of sci-fi level explanations like simulation theory, like the idea no. that souls just continue throughout time and stuff, because it's the idea that there's that face. And then, yeah, as you say, the meaning of the word is the irresistible <laughs> urge to do something inadvisable. Which describes which, your career. In many ways, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, ignoring all of the fine work you've oh, done. No, listen, I've done a lot of great work in my career. I've done a lot of consistent work, but the cacothesy. <laughs> oh, what, what is the word? Uh, Cacoethes. Yeah. That, that has held me down. If I, Maybe it's because yeah. it's so difficult to remember. You know, I, I couldn't mm. keep it in mind. It that is mental. irresistible urge. It is mental. Like, I, I, I can't I, lie. I, this is one thing that's always tilted me, right? 
yeah. is that when people hold me accountable for the things I've said or done, damn those people. <laughs> no, but when they do it, right, they always do it from the perspective that, because it's a famous thing about me, that people yeah. always say that I give off the vibe that I think that everything I'm saying is like 100% correct and I know everything, which I've yeah. never understood because actually I will always admit stuff like, well, you know, people could have a different take on that or like, you know, it's just my perspective or whatever. But it is just like the grin and the, my demeanor that does that. Because, listen, I've, there's plenty of times I've even thought to myself five seconds later, like, why am I saying that, though? Like, there's obviously a part of me just thinks about, let's say, <laughs> roughly about five years ago, when Chan Man was like, so you're looking forward to going to Academy? I should have just gone, <laughs> yes, I am. Thank you. That oh. ends the 400-related segment of the show. But obviously, I didn't, did I? I got my cacoethes. <laughs> Next thing you know, I've missed about five tournaments, few majors, probably lost about 50k. <laughs> but in the end, it was all worth it or something. I don't know. No, it is, it is fucked up, man. It's like, uh, and listen, I, I've said this as well. Like, I, I think it, there is a, a, a mindset shift you have to get yourself into where it's like, See, I, I, like, I, I've always treated this job like I'm just talking to friends down the pub or whatever. I thought that's one of the ways that it sort of makes you relatable. Dare I even say endearing, like, to an audience. You know, you just you just say what's on your mind and you're open and transparent. I never developed that, like, you know, that day nine personality, you know, like where it's like crocodile tears. Just say what you have to say to keep the money rolling in. You know, I never developed that that persona like it just never came to me because i would never done work like this before never been a, a personality never had an audience you know sure. the only the only people that were your audience were your co-workers you know on, on the fucking building site and in which case none of them fucking hold you accountable do they for the for the nonsense that you say so it, it is crazy yeah you just have to have this part of your brain where it's like constantly someone asks you a question and you go well the true answer is this but can they handle the truth about what I'm thinking? Probably not. Yeah. Go go to answer number two, which is yeah, of course, Poland's a fine country, and then and then that's it, and you just move on, you know. Um, so uh, a lesson learned. You're never too old to learn these lessons. Uh, I mean, here's old. the thing: people think I'm this joking. Five hundred years in the making, apparently. I have literally done that as well. Like I've had questions before where. I think one time it was when I was in China and another time was when I was in some Eastern European country, like I think like Ukraine or Russia, I forget which one. And someone mm. did just ask me something like, so what do you think of the country? And I said, I've made that mistake before. I think it's all right. And we'll <laughs> leave it at that. Oh, <laughs> you've actually yeah. done it. You've actually helped me find something uh, yeah. that I didn't have on the on the document. Um, let me, uh, Sam, can you quickly yeah. find the link to it? Is it going to be a joke about Hobbit causing chemtrails? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, it's going to be uh, because, you know, while we're talking about like people like, because this is the thing, I don't consider it like a, a racist or even necessarily a xenophobic thing to say. Like, I don't like going to this country. I think Obviously it's not. shit. Like, I, I don't like going to France. No, I fucking hate it. The dumbest part about that I entire hate it topic, I don't enjoy it. It doesn't make me well, racist. I don't was that like even what you might think is the worst stuff I said was basically just being rude about somewhere you're going. Now, by the way, it, the context of that is I totally understand then why the people at the place you're going to are like, well, piss off back to your own place. Like I, That makes perfect sense. Like yeah. that part, I, I always thought, in fact, that was the obvious counterbalance, which is that because I said all that shit just before I went, they were like, well, we don't need to work the event. It's like, actually, that makes perfect sense. That's why I've, I've said this many times. You will never find a single comment anywhere, including on that day, where I ever said online that it wasn't justified removing from the event. Of course it yeah. was. Why the yeah. fuck would an audience of people want to see someone they now know just basically <laughs> said their whole country is shit? <laughs> and then you know, they even just went in on like the food and stuff. Like, you know, what do you want? <laughs> so, Sam, the, the thread I need you to find is there was a, a, a coach uh, who basically called out Yanko for saying oh, he wanted to get yes. back to civilization from, <laughs> when he was in China. Yes. Right? Um, so I don't know. I think maybe it's in. If you type, it was on Reddit the last few yeah, days. It, it, it did make it on the Reddit thread. If you if you probably type uh, Y N K. The guy's like, alias was something like. Go. I think I've got it. Chinese American. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah. I still don't yeah, yeah, know yeah, who yeah. the guy itself is, but yeah, that yeah, whole, I don't know way, either. That whole comment. I don't know why you've picked this because that is a perfect yeah. example, Rich, of what happens when you're not on camera and how people would speak, but how people would be shocked if they knew how it was. So in this particular example, 
Yanko, I mean, you can read out the case, but basically yeah, Yanko's well, yeah. just doing what anyone would do in a green room or a bus or something where they're going, the fucking food was shit and oh, fuck, I can't wait to go home. But like this guy's taking it all to heart as though like, as though at all times. He time, made the food thing. like, Thank what's you, wrong Paul. with the food? <laughs> I did the hotel beds. Animal. What's wrong with the hotel? Well, I'll eat that bed. Right, so this is the Chinese American CSGO analyst freestyle with a one in, instead of an L. I, I I don't really know this guy. I, I can't make any uh, assessments about his work. I've never really never come him. across it. But he decided to um, he just decided out of the fucking blue to post Yanko stepped down. This is the first story we'll cover on the show. Uh, he'd been coaching five top NA and South American players, major champions, but only won the Zotac Cup for ha half a year and still said that it was not a fail. I forgot to say why I didn't like this shit guy. He was the analyst for SLI <laughs> Shanghai 2017. And when we were on a bus back to the hotel, he began talking shit all the way about the hotel, the food and so on. I was the only Chinese analyst there, and perhaps he thought he couldn't speak English. Frankly, it's fine that he was not used to the life in China, but at last he said, only two days left, come bring me back to civilization. <laughs> After getting off the bus, the more I thought, the that angrier I became. Who the fuck are you? Not a single NA and EU analyst or commentator on that bus even answered his words. I think Stewie is better than this guy. I don't even know what that means. But we'll, uh, we'll <laughs> Mad non sequitur right. at the end there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably no, is better than him of the game nowadays, yeah? Uh, Probably is. Yeah, yeah. Right, so just uh, first of all, let, let me let me tell you this, right? Like when you travel all around the world and get exposed to like just different cultures, different levels of experience, different levels of economic comfort, let's say, uh, obviously, depending on your experience and what you're used to, you are going to make some assessment about it. Now, we've seen numerous tournaments in China where like, you know, the fucking, what, that, that WESG one we just talked about on the show with Anders and Moses, where they were like, you know, people were like literally starving because there was no food. They get out to a hotel. We all remember the video from fucking Happy or, or Scream, I think it was actually, you know, where stanchions, bits of wood were holding up the ceiling from collapsing. You turn a tap on, a cockroach comes out. What, am I not supposed to say this is shit? Am I not supposed to say, get me back to civilization? Am I not supposed to say that? And like, let's not just pretend as well. I mean, like, we... One of the things you have to do in the West, and it, and it does annoy me, is you have to ignore all of the things the Chinese government oh, get up to. You just can't Especially talk about that. Especially because of the that, political right? angle, yeah. yeah they you actually can't tell talk you as it. well, nowadays, for events, if you do them in China, they tell you straight up, like, listen, we're going to apply for your visa now, so don't say anything, please, about China in any context. Don't mention politics. You know, just don't even say anything. Yeah. You, why put it at risk, basically? Yeah, and, and this is what I mean. It's like we, we, I went through all of this <clears throat> when I did a show about it uh, with uh, Nahaz and, 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 and Sir Action Sachs. Again, we've been talking about what went on in, with Dota 2. And I'll just repeat it here. It's just like, listen, it, that isn't civilized, is it? I mean, like, you know, when journalists disappear off the street for criticizing the government or top scientists go mysteriously missing after having scientific breakthroughs or, you know, m mass censorship or a people rating score which is like some mad dystopian black mirror episode where you don't qualify for bank loans or can't get flights out of the country if you've been a bad person and shared a thread criticizing the government on the chinese equivalent of facebook i don't consider that civilized so if i was in china even if i'd had the best hotels the best food the hottest dudes whatever that fucking meme is um I i'd still be saying can't wait to get back to civilization because i'd probably be working in china China under fucking duress because I think what that government does to its populace is a disgrace. So I don't know. And apparently that's a controversial stance to have these days. Well, I think it's a goddamn shame at a time when we're all being told how woke we've got to be and how we should use our platforms to speak out about things and speak truth to power. We all actually, when it comes to Chinese money, no one's got a fucking backbone and everyone just goes, yeah, China's great though, isn't it? So fully support Yanko in this. And first of all, as well, I mean, what a dirty little rat thing to do to, to, to basically print this, a, a, a conversation that we just have to take your word that it happened, right? It, it could be completely out of context. Like, would it change the context if, for example, Yanko had just, I don't know, he just been he went to get a bite to eat and someone had literally served him a plate of shit by accident. I don't know why that would happen. But then if he went... <laughs> Classic Get me back to bl bloody civilization. You wouldn't say it was that harsh all of a sudden, would you? You know. So I thought this was like an unbelievable fucking like just a pathetic thing to do. And you see this all the time from like uh, you know up and coming talent, like the the way that they want to get attention for themselves. 
is they usually like throw a fucking rock at, at, at someone who's established. Um, well, I'm, I'm sorry, dude. Like some people, it, it, you know, you're entitled to criticize your your experience when you visit a, a country. Of course. Like, if, if that's off limits, we got bigger problems, I think. Especially, by the way, and it's funny you bring this up because people don't realize, because the whole point is I quickly realized, even though I wrote it up in that massive Facebook post I wrote, which I realized now was a complete mistake because that, the logic is people who are really mad at you with stuff like that don't really give a fuck what your reasons are. They're going to be mad with you anyway. So I thought naively yeah, course, to explain yeah. it all, people nah. might see it from your perspective, but they didn't. All they did is just use it to snipe at me. But what I actually did, what people never understood in my particular case about that whole Poland thing is that it all stems from my not public rivalry with Carmack for so many years, right? And mm. people don't know this angle, which is that way back in the day, when obviously no one was going to any of these countries, but the UK was a country many people had been to, including Carmack, the amount of shit that people online used to talk about the UK was unreal, mate. Like all of our food, yeah. all the women are ugly, everyone's got shit teeth, all the things you've heard a million times. And so if you're British and you've heard that a million times, you at least think to yourself, well, fair is fair. If they're allowed to crack at what I'm going on, when if I go to their country and they're, you know, they have larders or they're all fucking eating food that looks shit, well, obviously I can just say it's shit, right? They had no problem styling on me when they were there. No, nope, rules don't work that way. Now, obviously, what I didn't realize naively at the time was, like in this particular case, the underlying implication for anyone who thinks it's controversial is some sort of like imperialistic notion or something, you know, of like Westerners versus Chinese people in Asia, mm. which is like its own fucking whole kettle of fish that you don't want to get into. But no, right. that, there's like a few angles on this that are mad. Like, first of all, he didn't even say anything about China. He's just saying that these no. particular hotels are whatnot are shit, which is like, bear in mind in that scenario, you're kind of at the whim of the organizer. Like if he just puts you in a bad hotel, I could totally see the logic of going, well, only a few days till I'm back to civilization along the lines of like, till I'm in a good house or Mate, I've said, I've yeah. said that when I've been down the fucking road from where I live, <laughs> like get me back to civilization. This is shit. And it's hyperbole. Like that's the other yeah. thing that tilted me about that. Right. Is that's a fucking private conversation. He wasn't on camera at the time. He didn't even know he was talking to this guy. He's just talking, presumably, to other people he knows in a bus, like work colleagues. He mentions to them, like, ah, oh, the hotel's been shit. This little rat's got a fucking glass against the back of the chair. What's he saying? What's he saying? Like <laughs> Listen to the whole thing. Like, not, I bet he wasn't even being addressed. I bet this guy wasn't even being addressed by Yanko. He's just eavesdropping oh. the whole time. Then at the end, he just goes, wait, oh, wait, over a year. Goes, I'm going to tell that Yanko something to my get him on. And then Yanko goes, you know what? Even though MIBR didn't win anything, I feel as though it wasn't a complete failure. He goes, aha, but do you remember <laughs> this comment? And then he goes, there were you. You know me. You know Freestyle One. You remember, I remember when you said, and then Yanko don't know you've mad him, mate. Like, what, what did I say? He goes, and you said the hotel was shit. He goes, you have to narrow it down a bit more. In China, <laughs> again, you have to narrow it down. And starts it right. You see what I mean? Like, what, what is yeah. this mad expose? Uh, I, I, I don't understand it. And all. it's all just to rinse on Yanko for the fact he said it wasn't a fail. What? And the thing is, as well, what I always love about these guys, right, is like the, the, when, when they have that mindset of let's throw that fucking rock. Right, they obviously think first of all that no one will throw one back because well no, that's not fair. Then you're just banging on the little guy. Fuck those rules, by the way, mate. Right, like I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? It, it's like listen, let's say right, I'm in the UFC, right, and I'm fucking, I'm, I'm training for a fight. I'm fighting John Jones. He's juiced out of his mind, right? I know it's gonna be a tough fight. I've prepped hard, and then at the last minute, Dana White goes, "Yeah, he's bloody gone and done it again, hasn't he?" So last minute, we've got this guy for you to fight, and I get in there and it's a midget. I'm still banging that midget out. I'm still banging that midget why out. Is he I don't know. Why is he? I've got two. It's not. I will say it. It's also it's also not that like great an example because in the UFC they do have like weight classes. So this guy would have to be proper. He was fat, massive. So no weight class. He's a midget. Yeah. How, how much is this guy weighed as you are tall? I know he's a but. Like, he had he had really dense bones. He did. He had really dense bones, so he passed the weight class. Right, so now you know I'm not going to enjoy it, am I? But it don't matter that it don't matter. You might beat the fuck out you. I don't know this midget's 150 oh. kilo. He <laughs> might snap, he... but he won't go to bits. Why is he doing that angle that like your dad used to take back in the day? Like I said, I'm not going to enjoy this. It's going to hurt me more. It's going to hurt you. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to enjoy it, but I've got to do it, mate. <laughs>
<laughs> just, you know, <laughs> just give me a scan of this. What, what I'm going to get my 50 grand, mate. Promise of the night if I launch this kind of octagon. I'm, listen, I'm not enjoying this crack, Jogos. All right, I'm getting that fucking bonus tonight. <laughs> all I'm saying is, if that little dude thinks I'm going to fucking take it easy on him after his first swing, he's got another thing coming. He's getting banged out, isn't he? He's just getting rain naked you know, short. Depends on his BJJ. He's like, Lewis, I'm just a midget. He goes, Listen, I need that fucking bread. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Shut up, freestyle. <laughs> Take him to the mat. That's that. So I fucking hate that rule. And and the other thing I fucking hate is like, let's have a dig into you, shall we? Shall I shall I ask everyone you've ever worked with? Oh, what's he like? What does he say privately behind closed doors? What's he like in a green room? As tournament organisers, or has he ever behaved unprofessionally? What, if I don't find anything, do I? Got to watch yourself when you play this game. I tell people this. Don't fuck... If you can't handle the fucking heat, stay the fuck out the kitchen. Glass houses. Yeah, exactly. Plus, the reason why that whole angle, which is like, it's got to be the worst one I've ever heard for an argument, to actually say to the person, oh, I have no criticism of what you're saying. I can't even invalidate it. It's not even factually inaccurate. I won't even give a characterization of what you're saying, but you're punching down. It's like, so you had to find some mad reason why I can't win. So even though I've, I've all every other criteria, because as you you've probably said it a million times, I'm sure. But we all know since me and you came from the world where we had, like if you go back in time, I, I, you probably would have to go back like four years. I bet four years ago is when we had like 20k followers on Twitter, 10k, you know, fuck all basically. Yeah. We nobody. At the time, the work was bigger than you as a person, you know. Well, at the time, if you had have gone into a battle, right, with someone way bigger than you. First of all, I can tell you from the day nines and the hooks of the world, there was no such thing back then of like, come on, Hook, how are you talking down a Thor? And it's like, no, they were just like, ha he is fucking you up because he's the popular player. I'm just a nobody, right? And then yeah. the angle they always took, you must know this. This is why it tilts me so much. When you're a little guy, what do you think they say? You're just fucking nobody. You're irrelevant. Why are you talking? Why is someone who's irrelevant yeah. talking? So when do I get to talk? What, never? <laughs> do I have to wait until we're neck and neck in followers and go, right, now's my chance. No, don't follow me. This cunt is like, oh, sorry, he's just passed you over. I, I, I give the rest of my time to my opponent. Like, what is this shit? No. <laughs> I know. Nah, it's insane, all, all, all the rules around it. But I guess that does mean we can segue into talking about Yanko, who uh, I, I don't think he'll be issuing an apology <laughs> for, no, for this nonsense. He doesn't give a fuck. I can already tell you, right, Yanko's on the next episode of Counterpoints. I just haven't edited it yet. And I did bring yeah, this yeah. up at the very beginning for some oh, right. right, to say like about that thing. And all I'll say is this. This is what a fucking G Yanko is. What a legend. All he did is just every time I referenced it and said like, and then he says that you said this, he'd go allegedly just kept saying. So he actually realized he doesn't even have to acknowledge it ever happened, which is genius if yeah. you think about it. It is a completely unsubstantiated example of hearsay because it wasn't even on, like the guy putting it on Twitter was a Chinese journalist who translated it from wherever this post was. I'm not even sure where, like Weibo mm -hmm. or something like their version of Twitter, you know? So it's yeah, not yeah. even like, it's even coming from the direct guy himself. So actually, he's kind of genius. I could just be like, uh, allegedly, I did that. We, we, we taught him well. We, we've taught him well. Uh, well, let's talk about Yanko, because obviously a little bit of a surprise move. We talked a lot in the last episode about Adrian being phase's fifth. It finally has been confirmed. I don't think there's any value in retreading old ground about um, you know what, he, what Adrian's going to bring to the team and everything else. But one move we didn't see coming... And we theory crafted about it before was that uh, Robin or Robin would would stand down from phase or be removed. We uh, we don't know which way it was. We'll assume the latter. And Yanko, who was obviously back in free agency, we were wondering, you know, will he get another coaching gig? Will he go back to broadcasting? Will he just be banging on China for the rest of his career? You know, well, he's now the coach of FaZe. And of course, former teammate of Nico, back when like Nico was like fucking 13 or 14 or whatever and first started uh, playing. Um, and we've said before, like, that if anybody can maybe be a coach that Nico's going to listen to, it might be somebody like Yanko who obviously has that kind of relationship with him. Uh, so this is an interesting move for me. I, 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 let's talk about Yanko's career in MIBR first before we talk about what he's going to bring to phase. That assessment of Yanko that it wasn't a complete failure, do you agree with that? Because I'll be honest, I, I'm, I'm inclined to, to lean towards it, it was probably a bit of a failure, honestly. I'm surprised you would say that actually, because it like mm. the big problem with this lineup is if Yanko had been the coach from day one, I would understand mm. more why people might be like, oh, this is shit and all the rest of it. But it's like he actually did only like I don't think it was even half a year. Off the top of my head, I think he became the coach. 
I think he was the coach just before the player break, I think was when he was announced. So his first mm. event was like the Zotac thing, which is during the player break. Yeah. And then like, you know, Dream Act Stockholm or something, you know. So he's actually only been a coach. We're talking like four months, I think. Yeah, I might be the time. Let me, let me, let me just check. Uh, so it was August, yeah. Yeah, so we're only talking like four months yeah. or something. Yeah. In that time, and bear in mind, here's the key thing about this lineup. Not only did they have Stu 2 k since I think something like April or something, maybe even more than that. It might, yeah, I think it might even be more than that. Maybe April, May or something they had Stewie. They got Tarek, remember, two hmm. tournaments or something before they got Yanko. So we even got to see the lineup without Yanko, the lineup exactly as it is, but without Yanko, and then the lineup with Yanko. And I have to say, unless he is just the luckiest guy ever, and the Tarek lineup just snapped into place the second he came through the door and he didn't do fuck all, I think the team looked better as soon as he became the coach. Like Literally, as soon as he became the coach. Immediately, sure. those first tournaments, they were like already like actually like competitive again. They were even getting the odd upset win over someone. You go towards the end of the year, they did eventually beat Astralis. They did make it to a big final. Yeah, they didn't win a title. But I, I actually think if you look at that lineup, I don't think it's a coincidence that as well as letting go of Yanko, they also changed players. Like they themselves clearly don't believe in that lineup, no matter what they said in a million interviews. So I agree, he didn't do an amazing job. I, I get I couldn't give him coach of the year, but it looks like to me like he did a good enough job. Um, okay, well like <laughs> I, I sort of agree with that in principle because you're right. There, there was a definite immediate improvement. I think we can agree with that. The Zotac, like if you uh, remember mass... how bad they were, like months. Oh before. yeah, 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 yeah. Like they course. could, they could legit go out with tournaments like you know, like ninth place or something, and not even have a chance of making it further. It was, it was but crazy the... the dire straits they were in. Where, where, where I start, where it starts to pivot in my mind towards it being a failure, I think, is around uh, IEM Chicago. I think it was where it was that disastrous. That was the worst it, one. That was the one they went out. Yeah. Pretty, yeah, and 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 you know this this came after a, a run where you know they like were runners up in Istanbul with which uh, the Blast Pro Series that was out there. Obviously, we all remember what happened at the major, um, but it was still all things considered not a bad run. Sure, uh, you top know, four. yeah, top four. Um, it it just felt to me towards the end of the tenure they were disappointing in Lisbon as well. Um, it, it, it kind of felt like they were starting to regress. Uh, and, and oh, sure. I th oh, by the way, I do think that the lineup had run its course anyway. Like, yeah, they kept yeah. young like personally, I, I, I voted to vote, blow that thing up from day one. I always said I never thought that was a great lineup, never was really riding with it. And clearly, it wasn't going to get any better, in my opinion. Yeah, and, and I, and I think best is. It, it just depends <clears throat> how much responsibility for this you want to place on Yanko's shoulders. I'll definitely say this. I, I almost feel that, like, Yanko was sort of running up against the deep state of fallen right like he's trying to probably implement ideas oh, of course change the team work with the roster that's there meanwhile you know gabriel two-faced fucking toledo is compartmentalized All right, we're gonna we're gonna get rid of the americans and don't tell yanko we're doing this there was probably an element of that because yanko seemed to be surprised when he was let go you know there was that interview we did with hltv where he said i was surprised i you know i thought things were moving forward yeah. Um, so it kind not of surprised sounds... by the way, because even though, yes, internally they might have said different things, but remember, every I'm not exaggerating, go and look at any interview until they made until those roster moves were leaked that they're going to get tackled back, and even to the very end. The entire narrative from all the players is like, you know, we're still working on things, we're improving, communication is getting better daily, you know, we get a better sense of what we want to do. They make it sound like it's a long-term project and they're like halfway yeah. through, you know. They don't make it sound like... The mad thing about that whole story is... Even that team in the past is throwing motherfuckers under the bus all the time. Phelps, oh, FNX, yeah, or, yeah, you know, yeah. normally they're very quick to even make it publicly. Like excuses sort of like... Uh, some of us aren't doing as well. They, like they weren't doing that at all during the Anko tenure. So I'm with you. I kind of feel like they just like said one thing and then out of nowhere he's just told, "Yeah, your service is no longer required." Yeah, and and like I say, I, I, look, I, I think there are a few people that I would uh, deem to be uncoachable in 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 World Counter Strike. Uh, I think Nico's one of them, <laughs> which is we'll come to that in a second. Fallen definitely is. Because what does a coach a lot of really... game leaders are like that though, right? A lot of the yeah, great ones. Well, a lot a lot of the great ones, of course, because they basically do it all. I mean, in a lot of ways, they fulfill the role of mentor, sure. coach, tactician, and player. And this is why I, I think these people are so incredibly valuable, but also incredibly rare. But you know, there's 
there, there's not many I would call uncoachable that wouldn't be willing to work with a coach. You know, you think about everything Glaive's achieved. He gives mad props to Zonic all the time, and it's very sure. clear Zonic plays a very active role in that team. Uh, meanwhile, you know, I don't think Nico is even leadable, let alone coachable. And and Fallen, again, I, I think it takes a very strong personality, and and you would need to command the respect of Fallen. And honestly, not not that I feel this way. I don't think Yanko ever did have Fallen's respect. I think when Yanko was so. brought in, I honestly don't think Fallen ever <clears> wanted <throat> him there. He would have preferred to have stuck with just the arrangement they had with, like, you know, where it was dead and dead supplemented the more practical side the wild of things thing outside is, of the game. There was actually, and this is this the timing on this is mad. It was only something like a week or two before Yanko was officially announced as the coach of MIBR that Fallen said in an interview something along the lines of like, I don't know why people keep going on about the fact we don't have a coach. Like, I don't think it would bring that much or add that much. To the yeah, team. no, I remember that. Actually, like, yeah. legit straight yeah. up said that. Now, that's why if you <clears throat> if you notice when they did the Tarek move and the Stewie move and the bringing Yanko in, I actually was very cynical in terms of like how I think people like Fallen treated that. Like, to me, people like Fallen, what they did is they were like, right, we're in a team that's just moved organization for an insane salary. Like we've got, we're like one of the highest paid teams, all these factors, right? And obviously our original reason to be bought like a team like that is we always succeed. We're always fucking winning trophies. Like we're guaranteed to be a top team. And since that is literally what they were not in any way at the time MIBR signed them. Because obviously the sad thing is MIBR signed them at the absolute bottom, at the absolute trough of where they ever were with SK. And what I think they had to do as a result was you heard all those stories. We'll call Zira leave. Will this player go? What will we do about this? So for me, it's like when you get into that bad situation, you actually start to think sort of like survival mode. Like, right, mm. what do I do to just get buy myself another month and see if the results pick up? Well, so one of the classic moves that you can do in Counter Strike, a lot of teams did it. If you go back two or three years, was like, right. Well, they're going to demand that we make roster moves if we keep losing tournaments. So let's get a coach because then we can say, oh, we need time to adapt to this coach. And oh, he's just implementing his system at the moment and a new role. And also, even if he ends up being a shit coach, you get a couple of months out of that. And then you can go, well, he was just a shit coach, running right? Get us a better coach. It's actually quite a clever trick to sort of keep the like fake yeah. morale up, keep the, keep people off your back. Because obviously, by the way, logically, if, if Cold Zero really did ever even imply he might leave and go to Team Liquid, if you are the owner of MIBI, you're like, what the fuck is going on right here? Our best player, my franchise player is going to leave. And then who are you going to blame? The first person is going to be fallen. He's the in-game leader and the team is objectively shit. And none of the players are working. Remember how bad they were when they like had like two maps they could play. Oh, they yeah, were swapping yeah. the in-game leadership. Like in that position, if you're fallen, I know to us he's a legend and yet of course you build a team around him. But there's a time at which everyone's on the chopping block, in my opinion, or at least getting close. Yeah, and, and you're right. I think, uh, you know, you, you have this coach. It, it does act as an extra level of abstraction for which the in-game leader can be blamed. It, it's quite interesting how that works in the minds of the fans, in the minds of pundits and analysts in a lot of ways, you know? Like, I, I think when a team is successful, very rarely do coaches get a lot of plaudits, but certainly when a team is unsuccessful, the coach seems to be the first name that people discuss. You know, we go, oh, well, what's he really done? You know, what are they really doing? Um, and yeah, that they, they become the first person to be uh, replaceable. Like from so my perspective, hmm. Fallen just understood that like genius line that they always say about like African tribesmen or something, which is like you don't have to be able to outrun a tiger; you just have to be able to outrun the guy next to you. Fallen's like the guy who's just like, "I'll trip the motherfucker yeah. if I need to." Like I'm not getting eaten by a fucking lion. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I mean, you got to have that level of uh, survivability, I guess. you got to have, you know, it can be a cutthroat business, right? I mean, even in myself, found that out. <clears throat> Great in-game leader, you know? Uh, you know, was turning the team around, gets an MVP award. He's, he's reinvented himself as an AWPA. Yeah, we're getting ready for Kadian, mate. <laughs> you know, it, it just goes to show how fucking cutthroat the business can Like, be. I actually find it quite sad and quite wild that if you look at 2018 and the results that this SK slash MIBR team had, bear in mind that beyond something like a month and a half of the entire year, Fallen was the in-game leader the entire time. Now, are you going to tell me, I'm talking straight up, fans, other players, analysis, journalists, do you really think the scene fairly critiqued Fallen for his abject failure as an in-game leader with an insane lineup of talent, by the way? We're not talking about, like, 
Like, I'll, I'll give you a great example, right? One of the areas people always used to talk shit to me about existence was, believe it or not, the lineup when he had Kenny S in peak form, right? And I always used to say, yeah, but that's such a terrible argument because immediately I can say he had a player band who was a star player. He had to bring in an old player who had never played before. He lost certain other options because he didn't have all the choice in the French. You know, I can give you all these great reasons to why. There are none of those reasons for this year and fallen. The dude had yeah. literally, like that guy that said there, five players in the server at any one time were major champions. And this motherfucker was doing nothing. Yeah, and get people forget as well. Yeah, people forget as well. It wasn't just that he wasn't able to turn us into a winning team. Like, his own game massively dipped. Oh, for sure. And you could tell, yeah. by the way, he even lost confidence in himself. It was clear from the way he was talking. That, like, this is a guy who normally would tell you, no, we're going to turn it around. It's fit. Don't worry, I've got it. It's all he lost a lot of that swagger this year. <clears> oh, yeah. <throat> I, I remember him being quoted in, in interviews and stuff, saying stuff like... Uh, you know, I, I, well, I don't know, I don't know what to do. You know, like I, I, I don't know what we need to change. Um, I think we can still make it work. You know, it was, a, it was very different. Um, especially given this is an in-game leader who, in the past, has made like brutal cuts to the team. Yeah. To, to, to find that winning formula. You're right. I think the winning formula eluded him. We are going to talk more about MIPR in just a moment, but let's get to this Yanko and Phase thing. First of all, I, I've, I've often thought for a while that. Uh, Robin, I've never really understood, uh, you know, how he kind of was just this, you know, I think it's like two years or something he'd been. Uh, oh, more than that. I mean, he was yeah. there when we were doing E-League first with the old lineup before. Kind yeah, of. mad, right? And it, it's like, he's been there all that time. And uh, Incredible, like the fucking invisible man. No one's ever talked about him and said, oh, well, maybe they need to, you know, I, I can't remember a conversation where it's like, FaZe need to change their coach. I've heard it a million times, FaZe, FaZe needs to change a player, FaZe needs to change an in-game leader. I've never heard anyone go, oh, Robin's doing nothing. And to me, like, he's one of the coaches that I, I would classify as, like, the water carrier, like, literally, uh, like, like Niak was for the French teams. Like, literally, you come up, oh, everything okay, good. Here's some energy drinks, see ya. And, you know, you get to call yourself a fucking coach or, or, or a manager or whatever. And I, I think Robin kind of fills that role. I, I, I can't imagine he actually sits down and fucking tells Nico what to do. I can't imagine that. I can't imagine, actually, <coughs> any player on that roster would look to him for guidance and advice on how to play. I think that would be absurd. Um... So, like, so I never understood on him. That one. Like, because yeah, here's the angle I have on that. It's like for, when Robin joined FaZe was when they had, obviously, the lineup before Carrigan, the one that was terrible, right? And if you remember, that was the year when a coach could be the in-game leader as well. And I believe he actually might have done some of that. I think he was, like, making some calls. I, I think it was, like, him and Rain were the ones in the team who made the calls or something. So my logic of why they initially got him was was sound. You get an ex-pro who used to be an in-game leader. You need an in-game leader. You don't. You can't get one as a player at the moment because back then no, no one who was a good in-game leader was going to go to an international team. You saw the only reason Carrigan did this because he got booted out of Astralis at a time when, you know, there weren't these big Danish teams that you could have mm. gone to. So at the time, it made sense to have him. And obviously, at that point in time, that lineup was such a train wreck. No one knew if he was doing a good job, he's doing a bad job. My assumption was that when Carrigan came, it makes perfect sense that Roban stayed. Because like I said before about the fact that a lot of the really great in-game leaders wouldn't want a coach who's going to say things like, here's how I view the game tactically, or I disagree with your decision there. Let's do this differently. What the great in-game leaders, as in, as in the great tacticians, typically want is a guy who's like, right, I do everything except the tactics. That's your world. Mm. You take care of all that, and then I'll do all the, like you're saying, the stuff that's like a manager used to do. And I would give yeah. Robin credit in as much as I would say the role he played in phase is a role that can't exist in Counter-Strike because we don't have subs, which is having like an old veteran in your team, like you might in football or the NFL. The guy yeah. who takes the young guy aside and goes, listen, like, you know, you've got to be more careful with what you say in interviews or, you know, or it, when, you, when you lose a big game like that, don't like affect you too much. There's an, another tournament next week. I th for me, it was probably that kind of angle was where he was coming from, you know, like a, a older brother type figure, which, mm. by the way, you know, there's value in that. And especially Absolutely. Actually, Absolutely. when you're in a team like FaZe, you could even argue they've got so much skill. Actually, having someone to help them keep their heads screwed on has some value. You know, you're not, you're not trying to necessarily literally tactically manage them at that point in time. You're just trying to keep them together as players. So mm. I could see that angle. And like I say, if you're someone like Carrigan who wants complete control, perfect coach for you. He's never going to meddle with what you do. But yeah, if you're moving beyond that, and especially if you go into a world in which <clears throat> people now, obviously Nico's going to be the in-game leader, want tactical intervention. They want someone to help this guy out and guide him and figure out how to use the new players. It feels like Robin's not the person to do that. Yeah. 
Uh, so Yanko comes in. Again, we've alluded to it already. He does have this relationship with Nico. If anybody can get in a gangbang with Nico, I'd say it's Yanko. He knows not to uh, complain. He just goes, oh, if, <laughs> like, you the way you're fucking hard as well. Going. Fuck. I mean, if I had a go. <laughs> but um, uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think like... like you when, know when something? You... I'll tell you a little story right now. Oh, I mean, here we go. I'll be really quick. But here's <laughs> the thing. Right. I could that, be... That's what Yanko said. I yeah. will absolutely admit I could be totally wrong. We're, by the way, me and Richard, we know we know Nico a little bit. We are largely speculating about his personality, etc. Nico does remind me for some reason of this kid that I knew when I was young, right? And I went to his house once because <laughs> because he was like, "Oh, you want to come around my house and play on the Mega Drive?" And the Mega Drive for all Americans, by the way, it was a Sega Genesis. That's what we called it in England, right? I don't know why because I don't it, know what, I don't actually know the slang going. of Mega was only a thing up north. But Mega Drive sounds wicked if you're from north. He's like, "Fucking hell, it's Mega." <laughs> So anyway, we're there with the Mega Drive, right? And this, and this kid, unfortunately, was one of these people who hasn't yet, like, been fully socialized to understand, like, polite etiquette, right? So I go around, and I sit there, and he's having his go on the game first, right? He's playing it, and obviously it's his game, so he's mega right, so he just plays for, like, an hour. And then he goes, right, and he dies, and he goes, your turn. And then I start playing, and I've only, like, jumped the fucking character up one level, and his mum just comes in, like, yeah, Duncan's got to go now. Your turn's ready, you've got to go. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm looking at this kid, like, really, homie? One jump? It's your game, you daft cunt. You're going to play it the whole time when I'm not here. Why are I playing it while you're why, why am I watching you play? That's just kind of what I don't know why, but that's the vibe I get from Nico. Okay? Why? He's a greedy little Mega Drive hoarding. One fucking He's jump. Let me play Batman Returns because that was my time to shine. So. Why have you remembered that? Why is, is he that... drinking it when it fucking sailed it up? Just one is... jump. Why is that still in your brain? Like after all these years. You know. Right, anyway, yeah, you're right. <laughs> mega Nico, Drive. <laughs> Nico doesn't share the Mega Drive. There's a headline for you. Um, right, anyway. Uh, so, so <laughs> Yank, Yanko uh, coming in. I, you know, I think maybe, obviously, Nico will listen to him. I think Yanko with this gig goes out of the fucking frying pan into the fire, though. I mean, you have one dysfunctional team that's under a lot of pressure to succeed spent a lot of money high profile names you're there five six months whatever it doesn't work out you leave and then you go to phase a dysfunctional team with a lot of high profile names under pressure to succeed oh you know i've realized i obviously should have ended that true anecdote with some stupid joke like anyway that boy grew up to be didn't you you know that would obviously be i should have gone with some angle like that shouldn't i like would have been good would've tried been to good. make it like some real thing even though i guess tyler we, tyler we used to call him um, I used to tell him, listen, stop fucking around with those kids' games. You'll never make it doing that. Come with me to the car phone warehouse and let's get our career started. Listen, you could be a manager one day. Keep your head down, son. Have all the mega drives you want then. That's why I'm that doing stupid it. fucking die out your ear. <laughs> exactly. Um, anyway, so it's a tough Best game. was when he went on Ellen DeGeneres. It was like a fucking mirror. It's like a split screen. It's like, what the fuck? What's this reflection? <laughs> it was. So it's Carl, a tough one. <laughs> So it's a tough gig for Yanko this yes. one, isn't it? Doug? Yes, indeed. Tough gig. <laughs> <laughs> now, now back to Ellen. And, um, really but but can, can he can he have an impact on this team? Is is this the um, right choice for him, or is this risky? Because I think if he fails here, if this team doesn't succeed and he ends up getting cut, it could effectively like put the kibosh on his career as a coach. I think he goes back to desk work after that, right? Oh, I, I'm definitely with you on that one. Like, if he doesn't do well with this team then people probably will do like what we were alluding to earlier about the MIBR thing. Be like, maybe some of that was his fault as well, you know, and he didn't do it. So then, yeah, if you've had two of the most high profile teams and you fucked them up, you're not jumping down to another big team there. You're either going to some shit team or if realistically, bear in mind, he could immediately come back and be a tier one analyst again. You're probably going back to analysis. I, I'm with you on that one. But I actually think this is a better move than when he went to MIBR. Like mm. I know when he was going to MIBR, I mean, I don't know how much of this is known publicly, but I believe he actually was already in discussions with fears of like, oh, maybe you could join us. Maybe that was just talking to Nico, I don't know, you know, but he, he was obviously in position to, do, to pick one of these teams. I actually thought from day one, fears would have been a better fit for him because first of all, they're a team, especially now it's gotten worse. They completely lost their identity. They have no clue what to do. That's a team that I might actually be receptive to doing it because the key thing is they've kicked the in-game leader. There isn't a fallen type guy to stand in the way and be like, 
no, let, do not listen to what he is saying. You're, you're, don't worry, you're in the team that's still here in three months. I bet Fallen does have it compartmentalized. I bet he has one oh, dude he's talking to. Deep, this, deep statement. He'll definitely be here in three months. And then when that guy leaves the room, of course, we're going to be here five months. That guy leaves the room, <laughs> talks to himself in the mirror. Just me and you, baby. <laughs> 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 my mad scenario. Like, he's got it purely compartmental. He basically watched some like David Icke video from about 20 years ago about how the Illuminati is compartmentalized. It was just like, why not run a man's entire personality off that? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it pans out. I'm going to watch that situation with interest. Uh, we'll move on to the next story. I suppose since we vaguely talked about MIBR, we'll just do this for the banter and then get on to some real news. But what the fuck are they doing with all this, like, cock teasing about who the last person's going to be? I don't know. Like, it, right? Like, it's just, hasn't it been reported? Hasn't it already been stated who it's going to be, like, ages ago? Didn't that happen? I mean, here's the thing. Officially, Tarek is still in their team. What do you yeah. mean a fifth player? They are just signing Taco. It's like, there's that. And then there's also the angle of, yeah, so it was going to be KNG and then it's going to be Phelps. And then people think that's the scenario, right? It's going to be Phelps and he comes back and you make the team again. So mm. unless this is implying like they're softening up the ground because they couldn't get Phelps and they're now going to get some unknown person, unless they go in that angle, which I'll give them credit, that wouldn't be a bad way to go to make it like something interesting about it. But I will say this, I'm, I'm sure this is what you're alluding to. If yeah. indeed they do eventually after all of this be like, and now the mystery man steps out from the curtain gasp it is phelps if it is phelps yeah. then all i have to say to you is the infamous words of an individual from the uk csr scene called x which just goes like this it's a very existential question he just said why you can't why <laughs> yeah. you can't because it's like what are you teasing i already know what are they teasing well this is okay i've, I've put the tweets in the in the chat so you can see uh, right, first of all, Fallen says, today I have an important leak on the fifth player uh, for the upcoming announcement. The player will be South American. Like, you know what I've just realized? He's done himself. What? I hadn't even thought of this. Right? Here's the dumbest part about that tease, is the yeah. real banter, if you are signing another Brazilian player, would just be to say, since technically it's not official who you signed, you just say... I can just let you know it is a Brazilian because then it's still sort of funny. He's still telling the truth. The reason why it's actually moronic to say he's South American is because you have just finished a lineup where everyone puts most of the blame on communication issues. Because as I said, they don't blame you for just being mm. shit at fucking shooting people in the head at Counter-Strike. Somehow when you went to put that crosshair on the head, you were going like, I'm about to make a, is it six shot? Como se dia six shot? Like, no, that was never happening, was it? You just shit the fucking game. But anyway, ignoring that, people mainly blame MIBR on communication issues, right? Well, everyone who knows anything about colonialism knows that the only country in South America that speaks Portuguese is Brazil because Portugal took that part. The rest of South America is speaking Spanish, which, yes, has some shared common commonalities, but is a different language technically. So... If you actually were to recruit a player whose main language is Spanish, you would have done the same thing over again, and therefore you would be a moron. So why would you even tease that? <laughs> why would you even tease that? Well, no, where, where it gets worse is, of course, top reply to it. Noah Winston, I hear Argentina has some good CS goal players. Just want to say this isn't the stupidest thing about, about all of this garbage. Uh, somebody actually made a thread. No, oh, Noah Winston talking about Argentine and Argentinian players. Like, there's, <laughs> are these right. people unaware what bits are? <laughs> right. Okay. So first of all, right, if there was one nationality that's never gonna play for made in Brazil, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you've heard the songs that Argentinian fans sing about fucking Pele. Google them. I can't even say any also, of Also, I'm just going to go ahead and say this. I know you were joking, Noah Winston, but in all seriousness, I think the players in that team have just about had enough about your opinions about players from the Americas, but not from Brazil <laughs> that they might want to recruit. They kind of trusted you a couple of times there. I know you may be operating on like a three strikes principle. Yeah, you know. Yeah. 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 So uh, just, I, I just thought this was stupid. It just goes to show if you want to get engagement, on your tweets, you just like you can't tweet anything of substance 
just, just tweet, tweet shite, don't you? Yeah, just absolute tweet shit. Bag of shite. Can't, yeah, just tweet absolute shit. Not even funny. Just like, their version, like, here's the, here's the thing plausible. as well. plausible. Just tweet shit. No, that, you've just said a key concept that they're missing is that it needs to be plausible. Even if you're, even if part of the comment is like, I'm obviously joking, we're not really signing this player. It's the, it's like April Fool's jokes in esports. The reason they're shit is they're oh, never within God. the bounds of reality. It's always like, Riot Games announces they will be hosting the next international. It's like, that's not even funny or plausible. I didn't believe it for one second, did I? Like no Riot one... Games announces they will stop abusing women. It's just not plausible. Is it? It's just yeah. not believable for a second that that would ever be true. Mate, I bet that fucking <laughs> Riot of Light probably considered that as a joke. Like, can we still do that? He goes, no, nah, stay away from that. He goes, do I have to stop abusing all of them, though? <laughs> Right, all oh, shit, my bad. Okay, so timestamp all that, by the way. I, I just said his name there. Whatever, just <laughs> insert this. I'll dub it in for you. Are you ready? Three, two, one. All right, employee. Like that. <laughs> Have you not followed I my know. career, man? He fucking has me blocked on Twitter. No, he he's, fucking, he's, I'm he's living in that cunt set. I'm living in that cunt set every man. day. Like, uh, there's a part of, he looks in the mirror and he's like, well, at least Riot's still going well. And he just, I flash up like fucking Bloody Mary. You know what I mean? Like, he can't handle it. Um, but anyway, yeah, it, it, you know, it's just, it's just stupid. This whole thing, like, as you said, just like I love it when players do it as well. I've always said this: yeah. players are just noobs that have amazing aim, and then if they played enough years, eventually they get the experience and going, you know. But like, there's a lot of players that are dumb as fuck. Like, I love it when players, whenever there's a move going on, and they're always like, "Ha ha, welcome at." Fucking Calix to face class. Like, we would obviously would never be joining, would he? Like, and, and also, your joke is shit. Like, it's not even a funny joke, is it? What was that one? Who did that recently with JW? Oh, wait a minute. I think like Seized implied he was joining phase or something. It's like Seized, you're not even yeah, joining no. my fucking Sunday League team. If <laughs> my friend can't make it, we'll play four and five. You ratched cunt. What are you talking about? Uh, it's kind of, oh, what was it? He, it was like. Something. Does anyone know what? To, to, oh, yeah, existence. The fucking, oh, that way. Right. Yes, the yeah. Spanish one. Yes. Yeah. yeah didn't get proper triggered by it. Like, why the fuck? Yeah, no, you know, this, just no, but this is what was straight fire. I actually like this, right? Yeah. Because what happened was they tweeted out saying like, "Oh, we welcome uh, JW," right? And they did this image, Sam, right? Which I'll I'll, I'll give to you, right? There's the image there, right? J welcome, uh, Jesper. You know, Wexel, blah blah, right? And then he put a fucking tweet out. Like saying, I'm sorry, but if you're gonna make a joke, at least make at least make it something realistic. The chance of you guys being able to afford me is approximately one percent, right? So he straight wrecks them, but does Pretty it within good. the boundaries of yeah. good taste. But then they reply with just this immediately. We'll miss you, JW. That's pretty, <laughs> like, that's pretty good at that line. <laughs> that's pretty fucking that funny. Like, yeah. yeah, so that's how you do things if you want social media engagement like that. That's pretty fucking funny, right? I'm yeah. I'm all about that. You don't just go. I hear Argentina has some good CS players. <laughs> you want a team called made in Brazil, you mad cunt? Oh, <laughs> Stop this. Stop the madness. Right? It's ridiculous. All right. So uh, an actual story, actual news in this filler episode by the filler. Right? And you're going to love this bit. We go from one existence Amen. to a, mo a much more depressing existence. Uh, who apparently is going to create a new team yet again. Make it stop. Turn off the machine. Like, I'll tell you this, by the way. If you're going to do a bit about fucking Golden, I lie. <laughs> like, if you're going to do that, mate, what the fuck is existence going? Like, serious, mate. He's a fucking head in a jar. He should be on Futurama by this point, you fucking mad cunt. What's he doing? Just make it stop. When he did that quote where he said, I'm not quitting till I want him, I didn't think he meant literally never. I thought he meant he'd give it a year to, like, stop now. Yeah. Just you know stop. what, Rich? You're going to yeah. be shocked. Because when this G2 lineup got towards its end, even before they made the roster move, yeah. I really did, like, you should go back and watch the episodes. Yeah, I'm saying the team's not good anymore. It has to have at least one roster move. Yep. They've, they've, you know, they haven't lived up to the billing. Shocks and Kenny S aren't good enough. It doesn't even look like an existence team. You know what? I was getting close to the point I was giving up, Rich. I was giving up on existence. I thought to myself, oh, you know what? You'll never no, miss. Listen, you're, never, you're there thought, up the no, fucking no, mountains with no, him in a tent. No. Fucking cowboy hat I genuinely, on spooning him. I genuinely thought this is the end. I thought, right, you know what? He's fucked it up now. Shocks has had him kicked out again. Kenny S probably doesn't believe in him. The Vitality guys won't want him. You know, they've already, like, they have basically the no-existence club. 
Obviously, the LDLC guys kicked him out before. Where's he going to go now? Obviously, you know, he has to retire or become a coach. And then he announced that he was making an international team and fully redeemed himself <laughs> on all levels. Oh the hype is completely back because now, technically, I can just say he always needs a roster move because he now has around 7 billion people to choose from for the roster slots because he's an international team. And also, maybe he can find some sick young talent. Mold them into a grip, mate. Player. No, but yeah, but here's what's going to happen, mate. He's not going to find some sick young <laughs> talent, is he? He's picking up screen. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like the complete antithesis. Can we all just arrive at the conclusion, by the way, that for whatever reason, all right, the headshot machine that we all remember, he 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 died somewhere, didn't he? It's that's over, and now he's more Instagram guy liner personality person than than a pro player there's a reason he can't hack it on any team he's on there's a reason when he stands in for teams he never he never gets offered the contract does he it's done and and the existence is that, that that reeks of desperation to me you're like right this is it now this is the fucking this is the last chance i thought the last saloon i was in was the last chance saloon but this is it right this is the fucking dignitas saloon Right? This is like, walking I, I, home from the pub and then <laughs> Scream comes out the gutter with the methylated spirits fancy and a quick nip before bed. <laughs> All right. Uh, my head fucking gets cold out here, isn't it? <laughs> Let's keep you warm. Yeah, it's fucking bad, isn't it, mate? It's fucking really, really bad. They're huddled around a trash can fire. We're going to do it this time. By this time next year, we'll be millionaires. It's too much, mate. This anyway, has got to stop. Keep us warm, Smith. Keep, keep us warm, Smith. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't. Don't even te- don't even suggest that. Like, please imagine it, that. Imagine that. Would you look at that? I wouldn't look at that, mate. I couldn't <laughs> handle it. I couldn't handle it. Right. So let, let here's the other name that's in the mix. Right. Um, apparently, Deva Duv- Duvek was in the mix. Nell, who recently announced he's quitting esports uh, journalism, I think, to go and, and shutting down. Because uh, he's going to be the new player of uh, MIBI, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's going to be playing with existence probably at this fucking rate. Yeah, international, but all of them have to speak French. <laughs> so we, we've got a real big pool to pick from. But apparently, Deva Duvek was never in, in the mix, but maybe Amanek. Um, all next matter. Maybe Amanek, as he left LDLC, is going to be in the mix. So already, mate, I am so fucking underwhelmed. This is like a, a, a raging hard on being hit with a fucking cold spoon. It's it's done. It, it's it, you know it's bruised. It's sad. It's over. This team is going to be straight garbage. Scream, Amanek existence. You can never judge out. a lineup until you know all five players. That's the thing. So even if it looks <laughs> bad <laughs> now, all, for all I know, the next grow player is the new up. simple. He's just oh, primed. But now you can get anyone. You in FPL, you find the next talent, you bring them it's on your team. It's not going to happen, though. Here's the thing about existence, right? What you forget, the cunt never really developed talent. That that that's a, That is a myth. That's true. That is a, that that's is true, a fucking true, yeah. myth. You show me his track record of developing. He did just take the best players, basically. Yeah, it's true. He, because he had the best brain. Sure. That was all it was. That was all it was. He got to work with the best because he was considered the best in-game leader when you lost like great motivational guys like KRL, sure. right? And people like this started dropping out the scene. All of a sudden, existence was the number one guy. The no, I'm guy. with you on he that had his one. Pick like, of the litter. like for me, uh, existence is like Carrigan in that sense. You're supposed to give them a team. Like you're supposed to give them the pieces like, right, go to work. That, like, that's the reason why I always make this this point, but that's the reason why you should really divide in game leaders up. The difference is someone like MSL can take a player and take them to the next level. That's what they yeah, do pretty and much. And has done it, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of, the, that is their specialty, really. Uh, but, okay, I mean, like, you know, Happy's out there as well. <laughs> How bad can it get, mate? How bad can it really get? Because here's the thing. I know you're saying it's going to be an international lineup. I guarantee you 100% everybody on this lineup when it's finished is a French speaker. You think so? 100%. Why? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you why. It's really weird, right? Because I've talked to Kevin. I've known Kevin many years. I think his English is tip-top, right? It's legit as fuck, yeah. People don't yeah. know. But he 
for, for such a supremely confident in-game leader, he's not confident in his ability oh, to speak English. Exactly. Never has been. That's why you never see him do any like English interviews, long-form interviews, yeah. podcasts. Why I don't think you've ever done the reflections with him. Mate, he is someone who literally, you know that famous saying, like, the perfect is the enemy of the good. He is like yeah. that. And his problem yeah. is, because in French, obviously, he would explain it with such eloquence and he'd go into such detail. He, in his brain, because he knows he can't do that to that degree in English, he just thinks, oh, what's the point? And I've told yeah. you this story before. I once said to him, this is like earlier this year before he got in a G2, I once said to him, you know, you should just switch now to English and eventually try and join the international team as your best chance. This is before he got brought back G2. So I said, you know, none, none of the top players are going to have you back in France. So it's, first of all, it's just not pragmatic to keep doing French only. And then I said, secondly, you've already got good English and all you need is just make it a habit. As soon as it's a habit, you won't worry about it anymore. And he literally said to me like, ah, uh, don't really know that I feel like comfortable in English. I go, you're talking yeah. to me right now. This is English. I, know. I, know. I don't know French, mate. I'm not speaking even French, am I? No, it's like that, though. And that's why I think what he'll do is he won't go for a national lineup. He will go for all French speakers because he's going to want to communicate all his high-level ideas, of which, by the way, lest we forget, we saw no, no, and no play on words, but no existence of that when he had this G2 lineup where their T-sides were shockingly bad, right? And... I don't know, mate. I just kind of feel like he's played out. I think he's a relic of a bygone era. And you can't just keep hoping it's going to click. You can't just keep rolling the fucking dice. And that's all he's going to do again. And if you are going to roll a dice, like at least, like I say, at least take some fucking risks. At least go nuts with it, right? Like, why not? There must be a bunch of international players in free agency you could do something with. Oh, and sure, maybe you take Scream as part of that. Maybe Scream, you know, can do you a job. I, I, I honestly think Scream should just become a streamer. I think they'll make a ton more money. I have loads of followers, won't have the pressure and the criticism that comes with it. I think he's at that stage in his career where I think that would be the best move for him. But whatever, like, maybe he wants to have another go himself, that's fine. But I, I, I just see some wretched, all French lineup being assembled, like either with fucking French players you've never heard of, or maybe he goes and like, oh, well, we need an Opa. Let's go get Tawanu, the most overrated sack of shit to ever come out of the Franco-Belgian scene. Um... It's just, it's going to be a nightmare, mate, because he's going to limit himself with this, like, linguistic hang-up he's got. He's I will not say, pick up the biggest mistake team. existence made, it's actually something that Nell himself even acknowledged, was just waiting too long to go to the international scene. Like, if he, yeah. the mad thing was, during those years, when he got kicked out of G2 and he was just an LDLC, right, I know that, yes, the French scene didn't respect him. Like, you know, none of the players in Envious or G2 wanted to play with him. So, but what he, what I think existence himself didn't get is that while they didn't respect him and you'd have to work your way up through the French scene to get a go, another go or have the whole French scene collapse and just automatically sort of get boosted up there. Mm. What he never seemed to realize was internationally, his rep was still really good. Like you saw, remember that? Do you remember when they made the G2 lineup that was like NBK and Kenny S and Shocks, the first yeah, one, yeah. when they called it the super team? And Pasha did that tweet that said there is no super team without existence. Like yeah. the international rep of existence was still almost near where it was at his peak. So if well, he'd have gone then, they've never played with him. Yeah. If yeah. he'd have gone then, that's when he could have gotten some real talents. If you think about like we're talking about 2017 now, he could have had like some of the players from those international teams, you think of like fucking the players that were in Penta, Sonny, and then you think about some of the mouse sports players before they got a really good in-game in leader set. Like these players would have been available. He actually could have made a decent squad and reinvented well, his career. I mean, this is this is where I would go with it if I was him. I, I, would, I would honestly go for the fucking mean team at this point. You probably could get fucking Pasha on, on a lineup, couldn't you? You know what I mean? Go get to him. Like P Pasha is obviously not happy with the fucking whole Vertus Pro thing and how it's all going and blah blah blah. I'd lure him away. He speaks good English. He's going to be a streamer. You got, you, you know, he's been to the school of London. It's all fine. And then you got Scree. I mean, you may as well just fucking do something stupid. At you know, I don't know money. if other people truly appreciated how funny that meme was because I always thought, obviously, the whole thing that makes it so funny is that he doesn't even call it English. He calls it London. <laughs> like, no, I know, that's, I love it. that's the best part because it's like he doesn't even know the basics. Man, I had that. I used to, I used to happen to me all the time when I was in the red light district at Amsterdam. Right, think, think about my accent. It doesn't even sound like a London accent, right? But whenever anyone was trying to sell me drugs, they'd go, hey, London, London, over here, London. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, that's me, sir. I'm from London, you know? Uh, like, uh, so I, I don't know if it's like an international thing where they conflate English and, and London, so. What about um, this? I'll tell you a, a little piece of trivia that only you will know because you have to go to the Northeast. 
Right. Yeah. Anyone from the South or London, get ready to realize what absolute plebeians people in the Northeast of England are. <laughs> right. So in the Northeast of England, do you know what a London pizza is? Shit, this is interesting. It's so stupid. It's not like is, is, it a, is it a full English breakfast on a fucking no. pizza? This is how this is how sad it is because you're gonna think, what's right. the connection? Right? A yeah. London pizza, and that's in every every pizza shop in the northeast. That's an option, like London pizza. You know the same as like you know Quattro, Dimaggio, whatever. Like, yeah, if you go yeah, there, yeah. The London pizza is just a margarita pizza with chips on and garlic sauce. On it. Like, why is <laughs> what does that have to do? Why is that like the classic? You're like, oh, I'm having a London pizza that put the garlic. Sauce, Mate, that. chips on a fucking pizza is an abomination no, anyway. It's an amazing right? pizza. I've had it loads of times. Hangover cure for sure. Oh, no, but like if you're going to get a garlicky saucy, you just go get a Donna pizza. Now you're talking. That's the best one. A Donna pizza yeah. is the fucking yeah, Donna. Because it's like, why decide between shit. a Donna and a pizza? Why not just have both? Yeah. Four you do four, feel like, wretched after you eat one of those, though. Like, oh, as soon you as do, you finish yeah. eating that Donna pizza, you just feel like, I need to drink about four litres of water now to even me like, out. Uh, Obviously, you know the greatest food of all time, right? Because you live near, well, you used to live near Borough. So you know about the fucking Parmo. I don't you know like cheese, them. so I'm not personally a fan of them, but everyone oh, loves them in the North East. Yeah, they love the them. fucking Parmo was the shit, right? Now, it, it, and it was a unique thing that only existed in, in Middlesbrough. It's not For even a North East thing. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, people in Middlesbrough, like, average life expectancy is about in line with the fucking yeah. <laughs> Democratic Republic of Congo, isn't it? But, um, you know, you, you, you for those who don't know, what it was is you would take breaded chicken smashed flat with, like, a rolling pin. So it was, like, as thin as, like, a crust on a pizza. That's your base. And then you take that white bechamel sauce that you get in lasagna and you pour it over that. And then you put any topping you want on it. Cheddar cheese, so, the cheapest one, probably. <laughs> yeah, cheese, cheese, obviously, is Nothing high quality, no mozzarella or anything. <laughs> but then, like, a pepperoni... And you have, and then you have, and then you finish it off with parmesan on on top, so you can put anything on it. Part, you know, like, but typically you get a pepperoni parmo. That was the banging one that you would have, and it, and it's hot and it's spicy, but it's just unreal the calories and fat that's in it. And that is a local Middlesbrough delicacy. So much so that uh, what was he called? Uh, Woodgate, the fucking footballer. Gareth Woodgate. Gareth Woodgate. No, 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 no. That's Gareth Southgate. Oh, Southgate. Oh. Yeah, Jonathan Woodgate. Jonathan Woodgate. Yeah, the yeah, one that was yeah. fucking always injured for all the time. Yeah. Real well, away. Here's why yeah, he was yeah. always injured. Because I, I I used to know the guy that used to run uh, Malone's fucking Parmo shop in Middlesbrough. And apparently he used to pay them to fucking make Parmos and they'd freeze them and then like <laughs> fucking fly them out. Wow. Yeah, like emergency. Is this Parmo guy aware delivery? he is rich? <laughs> Yeah, Does he look, understand now? Things could just work. pay someone to make him a bar like where he it's, is. No, yeah. it's the idea, right, of all the things. Here's the thing, Rich. If you said all the way around that when Fabio Ravanelli went to Middlesbrough, he had some top-notch Italian chef flying out for us again. That would make sense, Rich. I'm pretty sure whatever cunt makes that par more isn't some, like, fucking high-level Michelin star <laughs> chef, is he? As you're saying, he just gets some chicken, smashes it down, pours the sauce on. Yeah. Puts it, and that's it, isn't it? Like, why is he... Why can't that be made To be stuff? fair, if you've ever been to Malone's, it is the Parmo. Right. I think it was just down the road from Malone's. When, yeah, I don't know if you remember when Paul Gascoigne had his great renaissance when he was at That Everton. was where he did the... Yeah, and he, he, yeah he, he played his way back into the England side. And then someone said, oh, Gazza! Because he used to drink in the Dickens Inn, and he was there with like a cigarette and a fucking kebab. <laughs> and he went, I pause for a photo with your gas, and he went, Wait, hey, man, you fucking. And that was it. And someone took a photo of it, and then he didn't get in the England squad off after that. I couldn't was like... that, that was one of the most trigger worthy moments of all time. Ah, uh, yeah, no, P poor Gaza, like poor Gaza. Especially, Rekner. imagine your Gaza, you're just looking around going, George Best, anyone? Why am I not allowed this part? Like fucking <laughs> kebab, what is this? He was a mad alcoholic cunt. And then, yeah, Georgie Two lives, mate. I know Georgie he's Two lives. Yeah, the yeah. joke would be, I know he's Irish, but, you know, <laughs> I'm from the North East, same shit. No, but what you got to remember is, like, there was, a, there was a boozer called the Dickens Inn, like, just up, uh, like, uh, um, it's just down the road from the from the uh, Teesside Uni, right? Yeah. And um, you fucking, honestly, all the records in sports used to drink in there. So you would just go in there and you would just see, like... There's Gary Pallister with Paul Merson, Paul Gascoigne, Brian Robson. Like when Alex Higgins, the snooker player, had cancer, he oh, was yeah. sleeping on the floor in the Dickens Inn. And Sounds you could go in and play a game of pool with him. He'd, he'd take 10 pounds off you. 
<laughs> so it was like it was just this fucking unbelievable like just every sporting alcoholic would just go to the dick and zit. it was fucking insane so a lot of people someone just in the chat said i went to that pub yesterday i don't know what it's like now i ain't been there for years but uh yeah if you if you were a sporting alcoholic in the northeast you went to the dickens inn it was unbelievable right i think we're doing a show about counter-strike <laughs> uh, uh, whatever alex the uh, hurricane higgins yeah I don't three know. hour biopic I'll, I'll tell you, I even know what he drinks. I even know what he drinks because of his time in the Dickens Inn. He drinks something that's it's foul. I don't know anyone can drink it. Black and Tan, he calls it. Oof. And it's uh, it's half a Guinness and half a beer. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck is that shit? I must wreck it that's inside. Irish love that shit, man. Love a good Black and Tan. <sighs> Not for me, mate. It's Not for me, and I'll drink anything. Um, was there anything in this DK's mailbag that was worth talking about? Let's have a look. Um... <laughs> Any hot leaks for the show, DK? I can't lie. I did did appreciate the part, right, where I like the fact DK even included this. Some guy just goes, like, I'll find it because it's so funny. He just says something like, I know I'm asking you all the time, any news about Mark Love and Flipside? And he's just like, no. (laughs) Why would would they be like, no, but there isn't, is there? Because they've got other shit on. I know. Why would I have any news about? Yeah, the news is the shit, and they're not doing anything. Like, talk, <laughs> talk about you idiot. That's like just saying, like, any news about Ray Rice coming back to the NFL? No, I don't think so. It's probably over for him, isn't it? It's done. Just get let it go. Let it go. Although to be fair, they could have fucking used him. <laughs> oh, by the way, the by women, the way, like, just want to say, last, last episode, in the last game. episode, you did say some outrageous things about my boy Dak Prescott. Still shit. Got carried yeah, by. He just gets carried by that fucking running. It's, yeah, Zeke the freak, he's garbage, mate. He's garbage, mate. Mate, mate did you, he went fucking beast mode. Got that fucking touchdown. They won by two points. What are you talking about? He's all right. Fuck. He's all right. Yeah. They shouldn't have won that game. So, whatever. Fucking whatever. Bad. All right, just saying. Fucking Dak. Dak's good. You, we're entering, if you look at, like, Mahomes, we're entering a new era in the NFL where mobile running quarterbacks... Sure, yeah. You know, they're coming in because fucking pocket protection is such a hard thing to fucking get. Yeah, but here's the problem, real talk. The yeah. fucking Dallas Cowboys have one of the best rosters in the entire NFL. It's not like he's working with scraps, is it? He's got fucking amazing... Same with Patrick Holmes, to be fair, but then Patrick Holmes is a better player, isn't he? He's got amazing yeah, roster. Yeah, Mah- Mahomes is fucking sick. Like, Mahomes is unreal. Never seen anything like that, because he throws the ball. He's a monster, mate. Yeah, yeah he, th- he throws the ball and wears that Prescott card. Not, not disputing that, but we're definitely entering an era where you're going to see like more uh, the value of having a quarterback that can actually run like a running back. Like To be fair, we should, I, why have we not? That's why Dad Prescott's going to get a big contract. Why haven't we just done another Patreon for a show that we just talk <laughs> about movies, whatever we saw on TV in the NFL or whatever? Like, I think it's coming. Uh, you you know, know. Let's be honest, Duncan. We love Counter-Strike, but you know, it's been, it's been what, like 20 years now? It's a bit you played know. out talking about it, isn't yeah. it? It's time to move on to the next thing. Like me and you need to favorite delicacies of the northeast. <laughs> yeah, no. Instead of instead of being the Skip Bayless of esports, we just need to go and replace Skip Bayless now. And on this episode of people I saw in the Dickens in twenty years ago, <laughs> Alex Higgins, former world champion. Yeah, you need it. You need fucking talk on this episode of people I played Mega Drive with. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. You're talking about me reaching. At least there's celebrities in my fucking stories. You know what I mean? People that, yeah. You just got some random. You just got Batman Returns. Yeah, yeah. You just went that around some random That's out. also what ticked me off. Why was he playing a single player game? Why not play like Streets of Rage where we can all join in with some play? You're being a greedy little cunt. Did he have I two was... controllers, mate? Yeah. Maybe he had one. I bet he probably did, but he's probably got, oh, I'll have a go on this game. It's where fucking sound it is. And then he's playing should... that game, isn't he? You should get in touch with him. You should try and track him down and be like, "Get a fucking you Mega Drive off!" <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah, don't have you, mate. I can buy all the Mega Drives now. Fuck you. All right, anyway, um, so I'm, not, I'm just having a look bag while while we're just filling again. Uh, there was this stuff. Uh, someone asked about the Riot FPS. Do you want to? Uh, you want to address what? that? Should I tell you something mental? It's the most over talked about thing in this. So people are aware, right, that a few years back. Volcano, the guy who helped with the creation yep. of D Cash and was obviously a pro player at 1.6 and then like and semi pro a little bit. Yeah. yeah, he did sources in what? between. He was he in did. CGS. He was in CGS. At, the, at the beginning of CSGO, he was like vaguely playing a little bit. I think, you know, he still had his, his finger in the 
pie or whatever. I don't, that's not even a fucking right analogy, but still got his finger in the pie, right? <laughs> not my goal. Maybe that was what that kid was doing. He, he, he was on sold the on the bus. Still had his finger on the Mega Drive controller. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, so Volcano, right, wanted to work for Valve, obviously, but Valve, for whatever reason, didn't see the benefit of that and didn't decide to. So instead, because he wanted to work in the games industry, he went and he got hired by Riot Games. And so yeah. supposedly that's part of why Riot was like, yeah, an yeah. FPS game and it was going to be some Counter-Strike killer for you. But what people don't know about that story is that story's about three years old. That's not like a story from last year. So any, every time I've heard people, because I've heard it happen a few times the last couple of years, people will be like, oh, but when Riot's game comes out, it's like a game you've never seen. The only person you know who's associated is a former player who helped design one map, not even like a programmer or something. Like, There's no reason whatsoever to think that there will ever be an amazing epic. Like, where's the hype coming from? Well, in, you know what it's like. I've always said it. Like people who love Counter Strike inadvertently have a tendency. There's a part of their brain that absolutely hates it as well. And when a new game comes out, like they'll always flood and try it before sort of slowly coming back to Counter Strike. That's I did cycle. love all the fuckers that were always posting those like daily threads of like Overwatch is higher than Counter Strike. It's like, yeah, well, mm. let's see how it is in a year. What do you know? There we go. Yeah, That's fucking gone again, isn't it? And what yeah. still remains? Oh, the same games that were mega successful. Weird. Um, but like, so what I what I got told about this was first of all that the original concept uh, for the FPS when it was originally designed was that it was gonna it was gonna take place in the League of Legends lore and it was gonna be oh, like already. Yeah, no, right. And it was gonna, it was gonna have uh, d different characters in it with different abilities. Kind of sounds a little bit like a game that Blizzard released, doesn't it? So I. I, I whether it's dead in the water or not, I don't know. But then on top of that, uh, there, there was rumors that they were going to announce something at the end of the year. Then that got kiboshed. And now apparently, my sources have told me they are going to announce a new game finally in Q1 of 2019. Believe it when I see it. I mean, I've been told this so many different times. But the most likely game to come out is probably is a fighting game, isn't it? They bought that fucking fighting game studio. They sure. recently sent Riot employees on Master the Last Evo here in Vegas at the Mandalay. So, so I don't know if this FPS is ever going to see the light of day. And the reality that, first of all, the company that serially mismanaged the most popular video game in the world to the point where it's like it's esports is struggling. Um, to, it's not growing anymore. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, its player base is starting to drop off, as you'd expect for a game that came out in 2009. And they haven't come up with anything new or innovative to try and bring people back into the game. Uh, meanwhile, you've got stuff like Fortnite coming out, just straight hooking the kids in now, like on, with, with a level of complexity that's obviously easier to grasp at, at, at first glance than a MOBA is. You know, it's like, they, why, would, why do you think they're going to make a Counter-Strike killer? You know, they actually, the only thing they've actually done is make a league killer in the way they've handled league. So I, I don't really get that vibe at all. And then on, on top of that, um, just, I don't think they're, like, there's all these problems going on with how they're all owned by Tencent now. Like, Riot is just sort of an entity that is now entirely owned by Tencent. And we know what Tencent like, right? Tencent like cheap, knockoff, asset flip, mobile games. Like, it, that, they're probably going to repurpose the Riot Studio or make a bunch of shit like this. In fact, it was reported there was a bunch of inattention about it. So I don't see this whole... Riot are going to release a Counter Strike killer nonsense. I think it. I think it's garbage. Uh, and that's Especially because Counter Strike is such a unique type of an FPS. You know, there's been many games. You know, vaguely in the same vein. I mean, Rainbow Six is around now as a little little pipe. You know, obviously yeah. you had a few games that were like Counter Strike clones, like Crossfire and stuff. But if you notice nothing's ever really hit the spot more. Like it's never actually had proper competition. Like the the old irony back in the day, obviously, was even if Quake had been massive because it was 1v1 in the esports side, it wasn't the same as Counter-Strike, so they could coexist, you know? Like, that's actually the reason why, as much as, like, I've, I definitely I've got a lot of blame for Valve, and I don't think they always manage Counter-Strike well, mm. it's still done generally a good job. And plus, yeah. like, what's going to replace it at this point in time? Like, it's, it's like, okay, people doing the same thing. Fortnite is going to kill Counter-Strike. I'll see where Fortnite is in two years, mate. Like, I don't think the person who casually plays Fortnite is going to want to play thought that again in five years casually. Like, I don't know that that's a thing, mate. I think games like that, part of why they succeed is that they can can it scratch the casual itch that none of the hardcore games can. 
But yeah. therefore, by definition, they are limited by that. Like, you'll never get the person. Exactly. They'll yeah. never be the dude who's like, oh, 10 years I've been in Fortnite esports. Like, it just seems implausible, doesn't it? Like, Fortnite will be replaced by whatever next hot shit is in two years. Like, what, in the same way as Overwatch did, same as a bunch of games did. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't really, I don't really feel that at all. Uh, but we'll, I guess we'll wait and see. I mean, I, I don't even think they'll release the FPS. I mean, you have to remember they created that card game that got leaked. Yes. Uh, when that Riot employee used the password, password, um, on on an account. Uh, so they they've quashed games before because of other things that uh, you know were successful in the market, like Hearthstone. So. I, I don't know. I, I think releasing an FPS right now would be a very bad thing. It'd be better off. Uh, the probably would actually be better off banging out a, a BR of a battle royale of some sort, honestly, than trying to make like a serious class based FPS. Uh, uh, class based FPS games historically don't do well and don't have longevity um, and have a lot of problems. Um, you know, and as I said, you can go look at Overwatch for that. I just can't believe that premise you said where they were trying to make it set within like the League of Legends universe. Mm. Like, oh, was that a good idea? Why well, is that a good idea? It's, it's, but it's what they've got, isn't it? It's, it's established. I mean, t technically, I th I've talked with a, a a Riot Games employee before, and like you know, like someone I've been friendly with, and I've been like, "Oh, you should call yourself, you know, Riot Game, hell, hey, whatever, you know, some shit meme." And they've been like, "Well, actually, no, that, that's inaccurate. We have made other games, our board game, and they've they've got this fucking board game that they've made." And apparently it's got like really good reviews for a board game. They're like a board game, <laughs> banging. From who? The daft cunts who play board games. Yeah, sound. Yeah, board games. Yeah, players. yeah. Shizzy Rich's house mates so literally just full of board games. Yeah. <laughs> we all have our own. Like board game. I like Limp Bizkit. What in the never, fucking back? Fucking over there. That is Boy Monty Cristo plays. Yeah. He's. <laughs> I'll, I'll remove all the experience that he got. Yeah, yeah. He's right. also someone I disagree with on his choice of hobbies. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and do not look favorably upon in that regard. All right, good. Uh, not, that was not as funny, the... is it? Not being able to say what I wanted to say. Well, yeah, well, you know, you've got to, got to keep Monty sweet, mate. So you'll be off that Overwatch podcast. No, it was more just I didn't want to get thrown off for saying the sort of, <laughs> you know, things that friends say to each other that's now considered politically incorrect. So Can't do it, mate. Um, so let's talk about, uh, there was this other thing that was going on, the uh, Asus uh, Republic of Gamers final tournament, threw up a bit of this drama. This is amazing. Of course. Love this. Oh, this is fun, I mean. Yeah, so basically, I mean, I didn't even follow it, because I won't lie, I didn't watch any of the games. No, who right? the fuck does? <laughs> well, this is one of those I watched the Team UK ones. <laughs> 20, 20, there were 20,000 people watching on the stream. You know what? Every time all you little rats out there have just gotten <laughs> sick of there being three tournaments Hello. in a row, and you go, ah, the scene is oversaturated. What's that? A streamer exhibition tournament. Count me in. Why are you boarding a plane for that, you <laughs> daft cunt? You just said the scene's oversaturated. Why are you going to play? Like, fucking Lobachenia probably says no to those. Even he's got some self-respect. What are you doing? He, he doesn't. <laughs> He doesn't have any self-respect. That, that was I probably pushed the ball out too far. Yeah, you, <laughs> well, just, just massively outlandish. Um, well, so basically, I was going to say, yeah, go did you, you, you the watched them? So, yeah. so, well, yeah, the interesting part is every team had their com streamed because the captain had to and stream that's their own a channel. recipe for disaster. So Henry right was there, streaming on his channel the whole time, and so obviously you could just hear like the players bickering between each other. And one of my mates was on the team, Jakey. So you could just well, hear him. Jake, yeah. yeah, he was just mentally breaking it because the caller, Russ, I think his name was, he'd make a call, and I'd be listening. And legit, the round would start. He'd make a call, fifteen second call, use all the freeze time, and then one of them just go. I think it was that S guy. He just go. What were we doing? I spaced out. <laughs> the sound, yeah, great, man. It's the idea you're someone who's not that famous and you're going to be streamed playing for like a couple of days. You can't even hold it together for two days in your motherfucking life. You still have to say some stupid shit or get in an argument with someone. So what was all it, the what games was... as well? Like Counter Strike isn't the best game to have like fucking mixed team in, is it? You already get mad enough <clears> with <throat> real players. So what was the uh, so so what was he saying, Sam, in in the games? What was he bickering about? Like he just didn't like the calls. Or something? Uh, he didn't like that. There was someone about him going in first. Like he kept thinking that he was being forced to go in someone first. Someone said all he the was time. like the entry fragger or something. And that yeah, someone's got, got to. Or something. Someone's yeah. got to. 
because he was basically, I think he was the best statistically at some point, and then he started having to play anti frag, and he obviously his stats go down, and he didn't like that. Yeah. So then it was all just constant like these fucking kids ruining my fucking game, trying to fucking make me go in first. Like, mate, you're playing at a fucking joke stream event. Why do you even care? Just, they yeah, should, just, they the they whole should point play. of the event is like, oh, look yeah. at these guys, they're good to be on a team with. And the old time this guy's like, what the fuck am I going in first? What are we doing again, lads? I space now. So. So, well, apparently. What you're right, saying so... is if they'd have had Dead Fox, they'd have won. <laughs> yeah, you could <laughs> have played all of them. Um, so, yeah, basically what happened was he, he uh, put out a bunch of tweets. I'm going to see if I can find the deleted tweets where he had. Because he went mental. I had a delete, right. of course. So yeah, the, yeah, yeah, well, of course, right? Uh, he said, um, <clears throat> he I'm said I, one I, thing I, I, lo- I love all these people though, Rich, that like they literally, the second they did it, they go, well, that's that taken care of. That's the last I'll be hearing of that. Uh, not that go- In 2018, well, 2019 now, you, you're deleting stuff and thinking it's gone. Is this real? I know. Yeah, you may as well just leave it there at this point. You know what I mean? Because like someone's already archived it or screenshotted it, right? But yeah, so he said, um, one thing I understood, my future is never going to be uh, with a UK team apart from one or two individuals. Culture and mentality is way different, and I was mainly talking to Team Russia throughout the event. Thanks to Henry for picking me, and thanks to my teammates. But then, uh, didn't he go fucking ham and say, yeah, yeah I got it here. More yeah, so then oh, that's somebody, somebody said, uh, you got carried. And he said, Carrie, you clearly didn't watch my game because I'm not playing my role and I'm following us as calls. And then somebody said, yeah, but you still play bad. And he said, shut the fuck up, you fucking mong. You will never achieve anything in your life by calling everyone a cheater and flaming me. Good luck at your McDonald's job tomorrow. Now, I did like that last line. That's one people. of my favorites. I do like I do like dropping the McDonald's no, job. But, but here's the thing. If ever anyone yeah, was exactly. going to work in fucking McDonald's, it's fucking Isk yeah. Undersauce. Yes, you fucking... Yeah. It only works if you drive in the fucking Beamer, doesn't it? That that burn. You know what that, I mean? That's like he's the guy who's just stood in Times Square going, you want to hear some hip hop? And he's got his mixtape. And then some guy comes past and goes, you know, I bet there's nothing even good on there. And he goes, this is you fucking loser who's making nothing. <laughs> you will never do anything. It's like, oh, how are you talking down to him? So then Henry uh, gave his thoughts. Obviously, Henry was the sort of the captain, the, the yeah, figure yeah. head of the UK he team. Picked, like, he picked each player as well. On, like, yeah, and he picked them all. Right, and he said, I'm very disappointed in your petulant finger pointing. This was supposed to be a fun experience where you guys could get exposure and show team spirit. You have a lot to learn in becoming a man. I wish you the very best, but the fact you call out Russ actually pisses me off. I do like that. Good on you, Henry. You tell him. Right? Not right, and this is the thing. I don't think he understands what. Like, first of all, UKCS. I've talked about it. There's, this is why you don't have UK Counter Strike teams anymore, and you don't really have any UK players anymore. And you've got to remember, Smooyer is a cunt in the exact same fucking way. And and now that now that he's he's hitting that difficult period where his form started to dip and he's starting to doubt himself. Weird, didn't it? Weird how that works, that the swagger and the fucking, you know, the being the mouthy cunt. It only works when you're banging people's heads off. It just makes you look like an even bigger prat when you can't fucking frag. So, um, the, the, the rot at the heart of UK Counter-Strike, and I know you'll know this, Duncan, and Sam, you definitely know this because you were even playing at LANs not in, in, in not ancient history, is everybody wants to be good, but nobody wants to try. And it has to come naturally. And everybody wants to be... The, the only takeaway in the back of their mind is, well, yeah, I'm playing with all these shitters, right? But as long as my... Right, but I, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm the best player here. And as long as I get my numbers and I can see people, look, I was the best player in Endpoint or whatever fucking garbage <laughs> bedroom organization. You know, Empire at least that, uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. You know what I'm... Right. Infused. Time, 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 yeah, time, 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 time. More I, 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 I used to be a manager of Infused. <laughs> exactly. That was the fucking prime of their orc. Look where it comes <laughs> since then. Yeah, it, well, the glory, yeah, beyond after, the glory, Richard Lewis. After me, after, <laughs> me, and Nick left, after me and Nick left, things did uh, take a bit of a turn. He was anyway, team, so. he was, yeah, just like you, living, living yeah. in the centuries. Uh, but anyway... <laughs> it, it, like that know. time he didn't let me pull out his Mega Drive for cheeky little fucking <laughs> kids. <laughs> You know, what they do yeah. is they all like, they're just always thinking about themselves. When the reality about if, you, look, listen, none of you, it wouldn't have mattered if you dropped 50 frags, Isk, you fucking idiot. It wouldn't have mattered. You're not getting picked up by a top team tomorrow. 
but you might get an opportunity to play with better players if you can prove yourself to be good role players, somebody who doesn't mind getting in the trenches, getting their hand dirty, hands dirty, doing the shit work. We all know there's always a room for somebody like that on a team when you're surrounded by better players. You're never going to be a star. You're never going to be anybody. You know, like the only your best you can hope for is you get an opportunity where you get to be somebody who gets to play alongside these guys and augment them and maybe learn from them. You know, you well, you fuck that up when you act like a massive bell end, like for everybody to hear. I mean, it was you know twenty thousand people listening to those comms. I think seventy thousand uh, on the is 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 a coup stream so you know there's like 100k people coming out of this basically you now know you are a bell end you couldn't have fucking made a bigger twat of yourself on a bigger stage if you tried and, and like listen i don't know if he's aware of this this is your 15 minutes henry calling you a fucking a, a boy and me and duncan talking about what a twat you are this is as good as it gets this is it you're not gonna be a smoother are you you know like you like what a what a way to fuck to be up fair smoother hasn't exactly fucking established his Hall of Fame career yet. If you're not even going to be a smoother, yeah, up, it? Yeah, absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Now, of course, what you have to do is when you act like a cunt. And that's why um, you don't have cyber sex with five people in an online <laughs> chat room with smoother. <laughs> <laughs> I had to give the equivalent, didn't I, for yeah, no, him in the UK scene, obviously. So. But then, like, so... It, 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 and this is the other thing as well. Like, if you want to make talking shit your brand, like, you got to own it. I'll tell you that. Talking shit's my brand. I'll say what the fuck I want, and I own it, and that's that, and I stand by it. And I never recant, and I never back down, and I never relent. And you can come at me all fucking day with your tweets about how unprofessional it is, and I wish, fuck you, I'll still call you a cunt. That's how it works. That's me. I'm comfortable with it. I'll live with it. If you're just going to be a pussy, delete all your tweets immediately and then issue an apology no one gives a fuck about because they've already forgotten about you because you are so fucking irrelevant and meaningless. Like, it, you know, I, I don't know what to say about you. So he did He did do an apology. I'll give it, so I suppose for completion in his little 15 minutes. He said, sorry again. I messed up too many times to give any excuses. I don't want to be an egotistical and toxic player. If you meet me in real life, I am the complete opposite, spelt wrong. It's just when I play this game, I become the most hateful and mean person to others, and I get a period of rage. Well, brilliant. Even your apology, <laughs> even your apology basically screams, well, just never play with this cunt ever again. Never play with this cunt. Good like, advert, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, good advert, isn't it? I'm, <clears throat> I'm sorry about acting like an arsehole. It's just whenever I play this game, the thing that I hope to do professionally, I've become the biggest cunt on planet Earth. Oh, yep, sound. See you and later. I can't man. help it. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and I, I, I just can't control myself. And he literally, the, the apology goes on, Dunk, and it's over three tweets. I can't control it. And after this period and look back, what the fuck have I just done or said? I tried many ways to cope with my toxicity. It's like being a fucking werewolf. No, but why did they, You're why naked, did they... you got blood all over your ass. It's fucking Counter-Strike. Just exercise why... some self-control, you idiot. When, whenever anyone says something, I think, I can't control it. It's like, it's never the guy who's actually on heroin. It's always some cunt at the end of the hagen Das <laughs> Cup. And like, oh, God, stop. It's like, you can't. It's just delicious. <laughs> you mean <laughs> now, for no, It's no, not an addiction, is it? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. You, you take that back, sir. No, anyway. Um, uh, anyway, I tried many ways to cope with my toxicity, and it would work for a week. But at any later moment in game, it comes out and I can't stop it. Don't really know what else I can say. I am not stupid. I understand that my actions hurt others and hurt me as a player because nobody would want to play with me. But as hard as I try to stay calm, I will just become an asshole out of nowhere and blame my teammate. <laughs> Maybe a team-based game isn't for you, mate. May I recommend a 1v1 game where you only have yourself to blame? Go play StarCraft. Just go do that. And then you can just blame Cheese when you lose. Yeah, uh, just ridiculous, isn't it? So, so stupid. Um, so just some thoughts about this UKCS. Oh, that, yeah, and, oh, <clears throat> sorry, just as well. Oh God, well, that's un that's unfortunate, isn't it? What's that that's point. I won't even bring that up. Just what I'm putting <laughs> in the chat. Someone's been tweeting out Discord DMs. So no, no, no. That's face it. That is. That's face it. Lobby. Oh, that's face it. Lobby. Is it? Yeah, yeah. That's even, face it. Lobby. Even worse. Yeah, we'll just we'll skip that. I'll, I'll do him a favor. Yeah. I'll skip over that. At this I'll, point, I'll this guy it. can't even get four people playing a game with him to just give him a break. No. Like, and we're filming everything you say ever. 
concept. Mm. No, the whole problem with this is like, yeah, like the, I'll tell you one thing I thought was kind of bizarre about this aspect though. It's because no one knows who this guy is. Literally, like I've never heard yeah, of this player. Never like, heard not of even, not even as a prospect, was, you know. Not yeah, even someone yeah. who was on the UK teams that I know. Yeah. As a result, yeah. like one thing that I found was confusing was what even is this guy's nationality? I mean, his name sounds like it's from Eastern Europe. He implied that you know it's not the team Russia or Italian. Where yeah, is he from? So, I think he's Ukrainian. So, yeah, he's Ukrainian. And he, but he's like Ukrainian, but he's like been brought up. But he lives, lives in, in the UK. England. Yeah. Right. So that's why he's like saying, no, I could never play for you. But it's just ridiculous that he puts a tweet out saying, I could never play for a UK team because of the mentality. I agree. He's general, adopted it perfectly. Yeah. But you're the perfect embodiment of the mentality you exactly. hope to get away from. So, yeah, just just really silly. But, you know, like, like I say, it's his 15 minutes. I, I hope it worked out for him. I hope this is how he wants to be remembered as like a fucking meme for, for, for a, a week, not even a good one. Fine. Um, while we're talking about memes, here's one you'll enjoy, right? You'll like this, Duncan. I saw Seized put out a tweet. Here we go. Right? We I don't know if you can bring up the picture. I know, I know. It says, just arrived to boot camp and can finally announce our organization, runtime.gg. And runtime is uh for their twitter accounts in german so i'm going to assume they're a german lifestyle brand that makes nutrition supplements by the way seized good looking lad good choice for a yeah, lifestyle yeah, yeah yeah appreciate that problem is he's shitting he so i don't really know where they're going with this or what his team's gonna be or yeah but he but he, he's changed his bio now everything he's playing for runtime.gg so, has, has the lineup been to announced? To be fair, Seized is quite similar thematically to health, healthy lifestyle supplements. In that, I like oh, the idea of them, but I'd never actually want to waste my time on them. So, yeah, hang on. There's uh, somebody <coughs> put uh, the, the team roster up. Did they put the roster up? Yeah, yeah, I just linked it to. It's oh, Hooched, Hooch, Seized, Starix, Kalinka. For, is this just a fucking washed up boys club? What is this? What is that? Hooch and Starix are back. Yep. They all joined the same day as well, apparently. The 5th of January. Oh, they've all just missed the deadline to join Existence's new team. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the real lineup, wouldn't it? If it was like oh, the new bro. lineup existed. I'd have, I'd, I'd have checked. Starix, out, man. I'd, have, I'd have just been like. And of you course, know, Isk coming in from the UK hot. Yeah, no. I'd have been out. I'd have just gone and been a full-time fucking Fortnite content creator if that went down. Like CS would be officially dead to me. I do like Hooch, mate, but oh, his best days are behind him. I don't even know if these guys are getting a paycheck from this organization. Kind of feels like they're just paying them in nutritional supplements, you know, and they just want to keep playing and try and get some attention. But like, come on, that team will literally play for food supplements. No, exactly. <laughs> That's that team couldn't be more fucking washed up if it was in my fucking. Sink, it's a joke. Fuck is that terrible? terrible. <laughs> Not the best analogy, but <laughs> because if it's in the sink, you haven't washed it up. I, I, I didn't think that one through. I'll, time it. I'll, I'll work on that one. All right, yeah. I'll work on that one. Um, no, but yeah, go on. You got anything to say about this team, Duncan? They will be the playing in the CIS, might <clears throat> Yeah, the main problem the team has is like it's not even just that these are washed up names, it's that. Three of them have literally been in-game leaders at the end of their career. Like, yeah. it's not even like, you know, some of them were all... Talented. When they were trying to desperately extend them. You yeah. know, even at his best, Seized was never like some star player or something. So the problem here is like, who are you hoping to turn around and reach career best form? It's not going to happen, is it? So, like, I don't know, it just seems like a bizarre... Like, it just literally seems like a bunch of... It's like the fucking Expendables, but without any of the good characters. It's like, oh, I remember him vaguely from the 80s. Oh, what was he? Some henchman in the 90s. Man. Oh, right. Oh, no. He's not dead from steroids. Sound. Still alive. Nice. He's not dead. <laughs> He's not dead. Oh, sound. Right. Oh, interesting. I didn't realise that heart replacement technology had uh, gone that far. Oh. <laughs> not bad. He's more pig than man at this point in time. <laughs> Go Insert on, joke, joke about obvious G yeah, yeah, There it is. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna, I know. You, I was very we're gonna. I, I, so, no problem. Put it this way: I can't lie. If JW did, except for the fact that I wouldn't generally joke about people's health. If JW did do a tweet like, "Ah, oh, bad news, guys. I'm having a 
heart valve replacement. You're telling me you wouldn't be thinking the whole time. Oh, what animal's that coming from? <laughs> was it a perfect match, was it? Your body didn't reject it. Weird. It's weird. <laughs> 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 I don't anyway, know why it's tickled me. Yeah. No, it's fine, mate. It's fine. I'm glad, I'm glad you tickled. Right, Sam, did we have any questions? Because there's no uh, we, we did. We had about. one from yeah. Detlaf Insomniac, and the question yeah, was just cold it. zero question mark. That is why all the question Why would you waste $100? Why would you waste $100? I mean, you're not wasting it. Like, obviously, yeah, true. show doesn't exist if you don't do it. Yeah. But we can't. What about cold zero? That's the question. I'll tell you what, then, because we've got how long we got to fill? Like 15 minutes? Yeah, we're will, an hour I'll, and a half now. I'll, I'll I'll take a co- you can put your questions in the chat now. There we go. And and, and one time I'll only. Pick, yeah, one time only. All right, we'll start um, with actual patrons. Oh, I reckon fucking yeah. cheap was in the chat. Patrons, yeah, if there's yeah, any patrons yeah. in the chat. If you haven't, if you haven't got my little fucking Ed next to your name, you're especially getting ignored. If you yeah. Don't even fucking Twitch Prime on. <laughs> Not that even channel. the three dollar. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, there you go. There's a good question from our boy Dazzle, and he's a player. So we could we could take that one. He says who's it? getting out of the minor? Which one? Which one? Uh, well, just all, all of them. them. Yeah, right. All the Let's have a rundown of all the minor. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! I assume he means the EU minor, maybe. No, he, no, wait. He's an NA player. So, but he literally does just say it all. <laughs> but he says the two big ones: EU and NA. Let's have a look who's in it first. Yeah, go on then. Let me uh, let me get a little team. Look. Let's see. Oh, this is hard to track. Right, European minor yeah. is Mouse Sports, uh, Windigo, Optic Gaming. And remember, oh, yeah, I got it in front of me. Yeah, I got it in front of me. So yeah. top three, yeah. basically. Yeah. So North Space Ma- Soldiers, en- Ensa, Valiant, and Vitality. This is not bad. The EU one's pretty respectable when you consider the fucking Ensa yeah. Mouse Sport. This is pretty legit. Not bad. Better than most of the lands fucking MIBR one this year. <laughs> so. Right. Mouse sports, well, surely immediately. There's one. Well, yeah, you'd you'd think so, wouldn't you? I think like mouse sports is good. What about what about answer? The problem with them is I do think they're a good team, but the teams in there's so many teams in this field that are around the level that could give them trouble. That's that's mm. the concern there. Cause I'm kind of with you. Like, like to me, mouse is the one that should definitely get through. The rest, I could make a whole like I could go between Ents, Optic, North, Easy, and then the Vitality one, I've got to give an outside shot. Mm. You know, there's enough quality players there. I reckon Ents probably on, on consistency should be one of the names there. So then we're picking between like Optic and North. I mean, fucking hell. That's yeah, so what is it? Right it's there, it's, it? th- it's three come from Europe, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's the top three come from Europe. Ah, fuck. That's tough. I don't think Vitality are going to do it. No, I, think I, feel, I, I feel like they're not going to. That's the thing. Yeah, I think I, they're I'm plump, I feel like North's the one I plump for. Even though like Op- Optic and North, you know, again, you can split in airs on this one, but I feel like North's the slightly better team. I guess Optic did just get the player change. Maybe that helps. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tough one. I, yeah, I think I think Mouse Sports should win it overall. I think a Mouse Sports, provided they avoid each other and it all works out, Mouse Sports ends up being the top two. That chimes with me. Then, yeah, you got to go with Danes for third because you've got Valiant, like, that's not happening. Windigo, that's not happening. Space Soldiers with fucking Yam. Just that's lost Lantaris. What's well, even the point at this point? Yeah, yeah exactly. Anymore. I mean, like, literally, you're just spinning the wheels at that point. Um, and p- plus, as well, it's like they're not in the organization, but I think they have to play under the name. So, I mean, that that's a great arrangement. And if anyone doesn't, if for any reason there's any problems, their sub is hard style, so. It's already looking rough, boys. Um, Plus, it is once you get to the playoffs, double limb. So, actually, in theory, if you just pick the team you think is more consistent, it's probably the team that makes it, right? Yeah. So, I mean, look, even with Zewu, go like Vitality could be like a wild card, but I just think overall, in terms of team strength and established things, you know what? I'm gonna plump for Optic here. I think, I think, even though it should be North, I think like the the fact that Snappy now is sort of playing for his life because Carrigan's floating out there. Right, and he knows he's a, he, he's already drinking at the last chance saloon. Plus the addition of refresh, who I think is going to be a good addition and go off big time. I think Yugi he must have hit rock bottom by now. Like he can only go up. And then North, I don't know about Cadian as an in-game leader. And while well, I think yep, they've got Valder and Kierby and 
and, and you know, I think Gade's been good as well. I don't know. I might if 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 Optic and North go head to head, I'll tip Optic to beat them. So I'll go with Optic as my third. So Mouse and certain Optic for me. That's what I'm saying. Okay, and, right, I'll and take then... Mouse and and North. Then, North as my three. Right, and then the NA minor. Let's have a look. I'm amazed how competitive these miners actually are. They're pretty legit. No, these are some of the best miners we've had. But it, but unfortunately, it also overlaps with it's the weakest top 10 we've had. Sure. Well, that's part of why, yeah. Obviously. Yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, the strength in depth. <clears throat> right, uh, yeah, can we just go ahead and say when we look at this America's minor? Yeah. Oh, first it's, it's things rough. first. It's rough. First things first, there are some good teams here. But we're just going to go ahead and immediately ignore Bravado Gaming because grow the fuck up. It's not it's not a fucking movie on the WB, is it, where you're just hoping that they're going to make it. It's, a, it's, a, it's not a fucking anime. Like You have to actually be good at Counter-Strike to get out of this tournament. So I'm going ahead and kick Bravado no, out of the tournament well, immediately. Right, well, 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 listen, I thought you were going to go down the route that, I mean, it's in America's minor and they're South African. I thought that's where you were going. Nowadays, but, uh, if you just set yeah, foot on a country's soil, you're, you're yeah, as, I know. as native as the person. The, 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 out, the geography of the qualifiers yeah. for CSGO is seven different ways of fucked up. But for me, I've, I've got, I'll take Bravado to go through in third. I'm, I'm very Come confident in Come on. No, I'm, I'm being deadly. I'm being deadly. So wait a minute. Like, NRG is the first one, definitely. Yeah? Right. Put it this way. If Bravado played that Envy team, I'd back Bravado, even with Carrigan. Right, I'd back them if they played in esports. Keep in mind, you know, Phelps is already out the door. Sure, they've got KNG, but like they've got fucking Cello, Harvey. You know, who are these guys? I'll take Bravado, they've been playing pretty well. Furia esports, you know, they've got a, a very sad case of art or <laughs> dreaming of what could have been if his fucking manager hadn't asked for a stupid buyout. I'd probably back Bravado. Imperial Esports, well, your big name Showtime, I'd back Bravado. So immediately, like, there's a number of teams. That, that's four fucking teams that I'd put Bravado above. And then Team 1, that's the fucking bit lineup with fucking Maluk. Basically, the Brazilian teams here are a sorry fucking bunch, with Ints being the best out of them. I think Team Envy's fucking hot garbage. I think Bravado can definitely beat them. And so my, my top two picks, obviously NRG. If NRG flop at this minor, then they, they've got a mentality problem. I think E United with FNS, uh, I, I've, I've always rated Moose as a player. I, and I, I don't know how, how the addition of Coop is going to play out, but I still think E United should be second here. And then Bravado for me third. That's what I think. Right, for this one, I think it's way more wide open, as in, like, the parity was good before, but, like, NRG, I'll take them as a definite. There's no reason they should fail. Yeah. The other two, I could go so many ways on this one. Like, in terms of, like, name value, the Ints lineup looks good, but I've also seen a lot of these Brazilian lineups with, have even good players in that aren't, don't have, like, proper in-game leader, don't have it. They're just shit. They are terrible when you see them online. Like, it's depressing as fuck. So, mm. like, part of me wants to go with that, but I don't know how I can pick a team like that after seeing some of the shit they pulled. So, I'm going to take NRG 100%. Yeah, I'll go United. I'll say they can make it. Ah, that last one. So, there you go. Man. Yeah, here's your, here's your third. Because the last I one's mean, basically Envy or Bravado, right? Yeah, well, no, Envy or Ints, because remember, you said you'd get rid of Bravado, so you can't now oh, then true. backtrack. Yeah, fuck Bravado it, I'll take Envy. I'll take Ka the boy Carrigan will pull off a miracle. He will make Cutler enter a major again, or at least he'll go to that third chance qualifier, whatever the fuck that thing's called, you know, being that at yeah. least. So I'll take them. Oh, that's rough. That's rough. But okay, well, the, the predictions are out there. These matches are being played, what, in like two weeks? Well, it should yes. be soon, right? 20 uh, seconds. Yeah, 20 uh, seconds. American one starts. Yeah, 20 seconds. So, yeah, about two weeks away. So, uh, what about the European one? Is that uh, soon? Checking, though. 16th, it's yeah, says. Yeah, the 16th. So, Just before. Yeah, next week. Yeah. So, there we go. Well, you know, maybe maybe because it's a minor, maybe we can get some uh, some IPs to the game, Sam, and do a No Miners Club. Yeah, I could do. The should difficult open, second album to the beloved No Majors Club. It should be. Well, here's the thing. Obviously, we'll have to discuss this separately, but we yeah. do actually need to Your figure fee. out what <laughs> plans we have for the major. Mm. Possibilities we could do something interesting there. Well, listen, I, I've I've said it uh, for the for the for the major. Obviously, I'm down to do another alternative stream. It's just like how crazy do we want to get with it? Do we want to see if we can get somebody to put us in a building and do it? I think. I, listen, mate. I've had a few people talk to me about stuff like that. No, I think it's doable. I think I you can do it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I've got I've got access to that 
fucking hours WSOE studio. The only in thing is though, Vegas. I'm up for doing that, and we can make it as professional as possible. But we have to still make it reasonable. Like we can't do yeah, every yeah. game of the whole major. It has to be like you know. The last <laughs> I ain't week doing twelve hour days. Come on, come on. Come on. it's come supposed on. to be fun. Reasonable. Well, listen, I, for me on my personal stream, I don't mind. I, I fucking I wrecked that shit last time. I think we missed one game, right? Like so, where we and every one we had a guest, at least me, and then for most of them we had at least one guest. So I'll do it. I'll, I don't mind organising all of that because obviously, <laughs> for some reason, Duncan, you're not going to be at that major. And, I know. Uh, yeah, we're my own choice, sadly. Yeah, and and uh, neither am I. So. Uh, so yeah, I think we'll do something for that. But yeah, if we can get some IPs for the miners, I know my boy Vince wants to rise up. Yeah, Vince sells rise up, mate. Let's do it. Um, right then, I think that answers the question. Padded out enough time. We've done it. We can punch that fucking clock. Get the fuck out of it. I haven't been any more questions at the end, have we? Nah. Right then. Well, all that remains to be said is thank you for watching this unbelievable filler episode of By the Numbers. <laughs> Shout out to the makers of Mega Drive, who sponsor, sponsor this stream. They don't. <laughs> fucking ad story is so dumb. Um, <laughs> I just can't even process that way. No, I just, yeah, no, just all be holding it in there. all these years. I never, yeah, never verbalized it. Yeah, just mental in it. Uh, anyway, one jump you'd have to you play this. No, no, you could play anytime. I don't have a mega drive. Anyway, so uh, thanks to rivalry.gg for sponsoring my channel. Uh, right, go to rivalry.gg slash RLS and you can qualify for up to $350 on their website, which you can use. Uh, towards all sorts of VIP bonuses. Go check that out and support the stream. And of course, thanks to our patrons who are the reason why Duncan gets out of bed. Look, he's, you can tell he's getting the money. He's even got furniture in the background now. Look at that. Yeah. Is that a shelving unit? I'm already putting it in because this room echoes a bit. So I'm going to like gradually fill it up and like soundproof bits of the walls and shit. So whatever. People told me if you put in shelves, you put some books in, it helps like capture the sound or some shit. Do you, I don't fucking know. Do, do you ever watch Red, Red Letter Media? You know the people. I've watched it a couple of times. Yeah, go look up. They do this thing called the Nerd Crew. Okay, and it's like a piss take on like you know all these like nerd podcast reviews and stuff. And they put like you know all toys in the background everyone has, and they have big specs, and they're like very cool, right? And they react to trailers and stuff. It's like a parody. Just watch that; it'll blow your mind. You should make your room like that, mate. It's fucking great. Anyway, uh, so shout out to our patrons: a hundred dollar patrons, Jerky's Minion, Botvik. Uh, Cash Enough, Cash Enough, uh, and again, new name, thank you. Uh, Detlef Insomniac, and our $50 patrons Manuel Stockley, Rekovic on Steam, Sardsua, Pete Bidstrup, Cal, TC Owens, Watch Doge, Carve, Roosty, Ditter Dornoff Christensen, Nastradamus, Marcus Kiumpa, Madsen, Colin Penny, Benakagi Assassin, and William Southern. That was by the numbers. We'll probably see you next week. Hopefully something happens in Counter-Strike. If not, you're going to get an NFL podcast. But until then, take care.